for every possibility that you've enabled unto us. That even the things we have not touched or seen yet, we believe that it's possible because you've availed it in the spiritual realm. You deserve that honor, Lord. There is no God like you. Nothing can be equated to you. So from the beginning to the end, from all the corners of the earth, we acknowledge you and give you praise in the name of Jesus. What a great moment in your presence where we sit at your feet and you speak mysteries and depth to us. We are excited to hear from you today. And every day as we are hearing from you, we are growing. We are getting steadfast in our faith. We are learning not to be fearful, but to face this world with boldness because you've equipped us with what we need to overcome whatever we see with our eyes. Thank you for empowering us. Such things are priceless and can't be bought with money. And therefore we thank you and we acknowledge that which you're doing in our midst. I pray that tonight, whatever you're sharing with us will go deeper into our spirits and that shall not be stolen by the devil. And it shall grow us into responsible believers. Believers with character because we are trained by the best and that's you, Holy Spirit. I know through the word you deliver. You don't only deliver through prayer, but even through the word. Let your word do its impact in us, both to understand and to be delivered. So we surrender under your voice, under your instruction. Your children have gathered before you, and I know you know them individually by name. And you know whatever they desire from you, whatever they've placed on those altars, whatever they are raising before you through their voices, I agree with them as I believe that you are meeting them at their points of need. In Jesus' name, welcome Holy Spirit. And everyone say, a mighty hand clap. Thank you, worship team. Kindly turn to your neighbor and welcome them to the house of the Lord. Tell them you are loved. The Lord is with you. Amen. Online church, you're welcome. There's been a lot of issues with network. I, I really believe and agree that it shall be sorted, but it's, it has nothing to do with us. And we are praying that God enables the people that are working on it to work on it first. Bear with us. And even when it fails totally, we always have audio sent on all platforms. And I would request the admin to send those same audios on YouTube in case we fail to stream in today. Today, um, I'd promised you that in this service we are going to hear more testimonies from the good news. However, I have a lot to cover today. And I would like to push that to Friday. So in case you had the testimony of the good news, this is still a week of the good news. Tell your neighbor that. We are still in the week of the good news. And God is doing a lot. I'm hearing testimonies all over, and I'm excited for you. So allow us to do it on Friday. Let's, let's, let's accumulate more testimonies, okay? And let's have them shared on Friday. I can't wait to hear them, because I know God is doing great. Praise the Lord. Today... I'm led to speak to you about spiritual parents. Praise the Lord. There are so many things that they don't really teach in church these days, and I don't know. 
But we thank the Holy Spirit that he opens our eyes to see and understand some of these things, really. It's rare to find such someone in church. And personally, I believe it has a very big, big impact and contribution to our prosperity and advancement in the Lord. So there's a lot we are going to learn. It's just going to be God throwing different revelations at you. And in whatever way he's bringing it to you, receive it in Jesus' name. Spiritual parents, are they are spiritual fathers and they are spiritual mothers. Amen. Galatians 3.28 Amplified says that there is now no distinction in regard to salvation. There is now no distinction. Like God took away the distinction, that thing that separates us, that makes others greater than the others. Okay? So there is no distinction in regard to salvation. Neither Jews nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female. For you who believe are all one in Christ Jesus, and no one can claim a spiritual superiority. So in Christ Jesus, both male and female are recognized. So in the New Testament, we get a chance to see spiritual mothers too. Praise the Lord. And when you find a spiritual parent, there is something that is added to you as well. You also find a spiritual family. When you find a spiritual parent, you also find a spiritual family that is spiritual brothers and sisters. And God settles you in that family. And together you grow in the Lord, encouraging each other, strengthening each other, making life interesting in the circle of faith as a group of sisters and brothers. Okay? So in short, spiritual parents help you to have a sense of belonging because they are a point of connection to spiritual brothers and sisters, fellow believers. Praise the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 15, and I'm going to read from the King James. It says... Be ye not unequally yoked together with non-believers. Be ye not. Be ye not unequally yoked together with non-believers. Like they are telling you, you are non-believers. You're not equal in certain ways. So you cannot be yoked with them. Amen. The moment you you connect with them a certain way, you're unequally yoked. Praise the Lord. So be ye not unequally yoked together with non unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Okay? What communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belai? And what part has he that believeth with the infidel. And I'm going to skip to verse 17. It says, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate from them, saith the Lord. So he tells us that we and non believers are not yoked. And this is not just about courtship, marriage, relationships. No. It's even in relationships with people in ways of agape love. There's where the Bible says, never run to a non-believer for help. Never run to a non-believer for, for advice. Why? Because there's nothing they're going to give you that is in line with what God thinks or wants to do through you. Okay? So, when God tells you be equal and yoke to non-believers, it leaves some people in a place of loneliness because maybe in the society where you come from, there are few believers okay 
and you feel around you most people are be a non-believer so if god is telling you do, there is no fellowship with them you do, shouldn't have fellowship with them or they, there shouldn't be communion between you and them it leaves you hanging because if you look at the site where you are not everyone is a believer look at the office where you are not everyone is a believer so you feel a bit left out okay and as God instructs you to avoid fellowship and communion with them, he does something else to sort you out in that area. When you go with me to the book of Psalm 68, New Living Translation, Psalm 68, verse 6, it says, God places the lonely in families. God places the lonely in families. Like it's God that aligns you to a particular family. And this is both spiritual and physical families. So he is responsible to know which family can you belong. Okay? So when God disconnects you from non-believers, he, he himself connects you to another spiritual family where you find spiritual brothers and turn to your, turn to your spiritual sister or brother and say, Hello. Glad to meet and connect with you. Where is Tabitha? A minute. Praise the Lord. So he connects you. Because if he doesn't do that, and he's telling you don't connect to them, so he leaves you hanging. So that's why Psalm 68 verse 6 comes into play that separation. Praise the Lord. So God places the lonely in families. So it's God that placed you in this family. Praise the Lord. When you gave your life to Jesus, you needed a point of you needed to fit into a group. So he did that. Okay? And when he instructs you, for example like in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 to 25 and I'm reading from the Amplified he instructs you and says and let us consider thoughtfully how we may encourage one another to love and to do good deeds not forsaking our meeting together as believers for worship and instruction as it is a habit for some but encouraging each other he, he commands us to, to keep in fellowship to keep congregating now when he's telling you to do that there is a family he wants you to congregate with okay and it's not the family of non-believers because there is no communion with them there is no fellowship with them. There is no advice or counsel or word they are going to speak into your life and it really builds you because if they don't know God, they have nothing to offer. So this makes you appreciate a spiritual family. Okay? That you give your life to Jesus and then he settles you in a family. He settles you in a family and today we are talking about that spiritual family the people who lose their parents and then he settles them in another family praise the lord so to adapt to a habit of meeting together as believers to worship him and receive instruction this group he wants you to always fellowship with as a spiritual family with whom you're equally yoked is always under a leadership of a spiritual parent it's like a family setup you have brothers sisters and a parent that's a setup of god we see jesus coming onto this earth much as he was god himself he humbled himself and sat under a man and woman called mary and joseph by that he was illustrating to us how life should be more they most uh mary and joseph weren't physical or biological parents to jesus they were spiritual parents because mary conceived of the spirit okay jesus's brothers were not biological brothers they were spiritual brothers and sisters 
So Mary was a spiritual parent to Jesus. Um, who is the father? Joseph, I'm joking. Joseph was a spiritual father to Jesus. It was all about spiritual, not physical. So from such a spiritual family is where God ordained spiritual parents. And as you gather around as children under the covering of that spiritual parent, that spiritual parent has to play a role. And that has to look at some of those things. One, Proverbs 23, sorry, 27, verse 23, speaks to spiritual parents and tells them, be sure to know the condition of your flock. Give careful attention to your hearts. We are called to know the, your, the condition of your life and to know and to give careful attention to you. Praise Jesus. The question is, how will we check on you or get to know you if we don't even... Okay, how will we check on you and the condition of your life and care for you if we don't even know you? Are you getting it? There are people in this ministry that I bump onto and I, hi, mommy, and I'm like, hi, how are you? I'm your special daughter and I don't know them. I'm like, oh, good to see you. But then you, you don't know them, Okay. And some of you love being backbenchers. So at times when I'm looking, I don't see you. But those people who sit in the front, you get to see them. Not like I know all these ones. We've never talked, but I know them. Okay? So one of our role is to be sure to know the condition of your flock. How are you? How are things? How is marriage? How is your business? Eh? Tell me that. Okay? And then to pay careful attention, you watch over them and see, Nancha come. Okay? So, we can't know you. Sorry, we can't look after you or we can't check on you if we don't know you in the first place. And I believe. That's why when God is growing a ministry, it's, it's, it, it's better for it to start small and grow gradually. The power with that is, if you get to know each and every one in your ministry, the moment it grows bigger to thousands of people, you still know them. Do you realize? You get to still know them. There are people I saw in Fido Dido, counseling, that is four years ago. But when they come to date me, I'm like, oh, how are you? And I narrate to them their story. They're like, how can you remember four years ago? I'm like, I never forget. Because some of these stories, I don't know, I love listening to your stories. And to me, they don't stop there. I go back and intercede for those people. When I'm praying in general, I know what to pray for. Okay? So I don't lose touch of those stories. But that's someone I saw four years ago. So you can never forget someone like that. Praise the Lord. So as a church is growing... In a gradual way, you get to connect to your spiritual sons and daughters. So that by the time it grows so huge, you still know them when they call. There are people who call me and I don't even have their contacts in my phone, but I know their voices. And I'm like, are you not so and such? Like, how did you know? I'm like, I know your voice. It's that deep, okay? So as the ministry is growing, we are going to dedicate the rest of the Wednesdays of this year for just our spiritual sons and daughters to just show up and they are like, I am the one. I am Nancha, I am Ruth, I am John, I am Peter. What do you do? Tell me. Uh-huh. How are things? So this Wednesday, I'm not having counseling because I have a teens conference. I hope you know. Yes, but starting next Wednesday. I'm going to be here only for my spiritual sons and daughters. If you're not, please don't come. So at 10 years, five years later, when we are so big that I can't even remember, like see all of you, I know you still. And I can say, oh, where is that girl who is like this? Oh, I'm like, oh, come, can I see you? Okay? So one of our roles is to be sure to know the condition of your flock and to give careful attention to 
your hearts. So starting next Wednesday, doors are open to our spiritual sons and daughters to come in and see them. So as you come in, you come we chat. How are you? What's your name? Where are you from? And we shall have register books. We register your name. We want to just know you, where you stay. What are your issues? So when you're praying, we know what to pray for. I know we pray for prayer requests that come onto the intercessing platform, but it also makes more sense when even when you don't post your prayer request there, I'm able to know that someone has a bad marriage and let's keep praying until we hear them testify. Amen? So there are those who are abroad, there are those who are online. We shall be um, doing it consecutively. If this Wednesday it's physical, next Wednesday, uh, spiritual daughters from within Uganda will call. Then the other Wednesday, Zoom for those abroad because we have quite a number of them as well. Okay? So it will cater for all. So we are also doing a census. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Okay, secondly, when you go to the book of John chapter 21, I'm reading from the NIV, God wants us to feed you, and that is to feed you with the word. There will be no booking for those counselings. You just walk in as a spiritual son and daughter. So don't make a line. But first come first. Do, some of you have a problem. When I say I'm here on Wednesday to receive anyone, some of you send your friends, go to my pastor, she's there today. So someone shows up, who are you? I'm meeting you for the very first time. My friend said you're here today. I have said only my spiritual sons and praise the Lord. Okay. Um, we are called to feed you and care for you. To feed you and not with food. So don't call me, Pastor Sandra. You have to feed me. I don't have food. I have quite a lot on my plate. Some of you don't understand the kind of responsibility we carry, but it's so huge. Okay? So to feed you with the word and to care for you. To care for you. For example, I have spiritual children abroad. And at times they go through things and then you walk with them, you call them. Uh-huh, how have you reached? Have they accepted here? Okay, let's pray here. Okay, yeah, let's fast. Like, because they are far, there is a way they hang on to you. And some of them are in countries where God is not so common. And then you walk a journey. So I have spiritual children abroad who I have walked deeply with and I've never met them actually. Some have met, some have never. But then you walk a journey and you walk with them until they break through. So that is caring for them. There are those physical I've done that with. If I've not, that, not done that with you, it's because I've not seen you yet. So come and see me. Okay? So John chapter 21, verse 15 to 19, NIV. Jesus, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? more than this. Now this is after Jesus had died and resurrected and gone and then he shows up okay, into, in form of a Holy Ghost before he settles in them. Okay, So when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon son of John, now these are the disciples who are remaining to carry on with the ministry that Jesus leaves behind. Simon son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. So in actual sense, he's telling Simon, Peter, that if you love me, feed my lambs. Like feed the congregation that I'm leaving behind as believers. Okay? Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. So he's telling him, feed them and Take care of. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? This is the third time. Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, hmm? do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Okay? So Jesus repeats the word feed my sheep twice and care for my sheep 
once. But if he's doing it twice, he's emphasizing to them, I'm leaving you behind, but please teach my sheep. Feed them with a word. Praise the Lord. And then he also tells him, very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you'll stretch your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you to where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify him. That even when you feel you don't want to, I will push you to do it. Just respond to my push. Feed my sheep. Take care of them. Praise the Lord. So we are all feeding you, right? We want to take care of you more. So please come, we see you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The third thing, when you belong to a spiritual family, you're watched over. Hebrews 13, New Living Translation. Hebrews 13. Obey your spiritual leaders. Do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls. Now watching is praying. Okay? So we are even supposed to pray. But how will you pray for you extensively if we don't know what you're dealing with? Okay? So, pray. Sorry, watch for they watch over your souls. And they are accountable to God. So we are also accountable for you. When you, you fall... They ask us. When your faith is not growing, we are accountable. Okay? We are weighed before God and there are moments we are found wanting. Why do people, why are people not hard working nowadays in their careers? It's because you're not teaching them. Can you teach them how to work hard? Okay? Why is it there is a lot of this in the worship team? Do this about it. We are accountable to your well-being, both in the spirit and in the physical praise the lord and then it says give them reason to do it with joy and not sorrow so your job is to give us reason to watch over you and take care of you without sorrow because they say if you if we do it with sorrow you do not benefit you can sit under spiritual parent and don't benefit from them even when they are anointed simply because you give them sorrow so refrain from that be a good child praise the lord now what else do we do? We speak over your lives. We prophesy. We declare. Whenever we are praying, and I'm like, you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. That's a mother, spiritual mother, declaring over her spiritual children. First Timothy 1, 18. Paul tells Timothy to remain in the prophecies he has told him. He has told of him. Okay? I will not read there because of time, because I preached about it a few days ago. What's the other thing? They bring sin to sin the presence of God. Where you're lacking in that area of cultivating the presence of God for yourself in a certain way. Spiritual parents are under mandate to serve in such a manner that they draw the presence of God before you that you may tap in it. And I preached about that a few days ago, right? So I'll not also expand a lot on that. If you missed those sermons, please go behind. What else do they do? They... Explain God's mysteries to you. First Corinthians 4.1, New Living Translation. So look at Apollos and me, that is Paul saying, as mere servants of Christ who have been put in charge of explaining God's mysteries. So that's why you need to sit down and we stand here and teach you the mysteries of God and we interpret your life, your destiny, your confusions. Your confusion as a single parent, your confusion as a single person, your confusion as someone who is failing to get a job, who is failing to break through, whatever, marriage, we stand here to just give you the mysteries to your life. Okay? So in summary, with all those things I've mentioned, a spiritual parent is someone who feeds your soul, who cares for you, watches over you, meaning prays for you, you know, brings God to the scene for you to tap into the presence explains God's mysteries to you. That's how you get to know someone is a spiritual parent, okay? When they are able to interpret some things you didn't know about God, those are mysteries. By virtue, they become spiritual parents. People who speak over your life and declare and things become 
they carry, they, they get a spiritual authority in your life. And your primary role as a child of God is to get yourself one, get yourself a spiritual parent. And we're going to look at two ways that God showed me through which people in the Bible got spiritual parents, okay? And you're going to relate how to do it. One, when you go with me to the book of Judges, chapter 17, and I'm going to read from the NIV, Judges, chapter 17. Um, I'm going to first read from verse 1 to 12, and then I'll go to Judges chapter 18. These are two different people, and they are seeking for a spiritual parent. And they get them under different circumstances. Let's learn, okay? But it's also good to know that in the Bible, someone was looking for a spiritual parent. Have you ever heard of such a thing? So some of you are hearing about it for the very first so if you don't have a spiritual cover of marriage, it's time to look for a spiritual parent. If Pastor Sandra is not that person, please look for someone. But have somewhere where you're situated. Okay? So, Judges chapter 17, verse 1 to 12. Now, a man named Micah from the hill country of Ephraim said to his mother, the 1,100 shekels of silver that were taken from you and about which I had you utter a curse. I have that silver with me. I took it. So this guy had stolen silver from his mother and his mother had cast whoever had taken it. So the son was bringing the silver back to his mother and he's like, it's me who stole it and I've brought it back to you, mother. Okay? So he tells his mother, I have, I have that silver with me and I took it. Then his mother said, the Lord bless you, my son. So his mother took away the curse that she had declared to whoever had stolen her silver. When he returned the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother, she said, I solemnly consecrate my silver to the Lord for my son to make an image overlaid with silver and I will give it back to you. Now, when this boy returns the silver to his mother, his mother didn't receive silver back. She just told him, make an image in dedication to God, an image of silver. And we all know that in the Bible, God was against creating idols. But there is a season in the Bible where there was a lot of ignorance. The Bible says in days of ignorance, God was merciful to the ignorant okay so these were some of the times where people were ignorant and god could just look at the heart and 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 work for someone because of their heart and not because they know but the bible says now in the new testament church there is no more excuse of ignorance we now know the truth okay so no more let me get something here for you Um, I want to explain this for you to understand why this woman is doing this. Because it, it may confuse you. Okay. Uh, that's in the book of Acts chapter 17 verse 30. It says, at the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Okay, so there are times of ignorance where God winked, where God ignored. Okay, certain things just because people didn't know and he hadn't yet told, called people to really teach and make people understand that some things are wrong. So these were some of those days. Okay, 
So this woman was ignorant to the fact that you don't create idols for God. But just look at her heart. What is her heart? Her heart is when the boy returned the silver to her, she said, I solemnly consecrate my silver to the Lord for my son to make an image overlaid with silver and I'll give it back to you. Okay? So you see her heart? She wants God. She honors God. But she has some ignorance. She's raising another God. But the heart, so God winks at that and ignores her ignorance and looks at the motive. So in those days of old, God could ignore a lot of ignorance. But, in, but Acts chapter what? Chapter 17, 30 has told you in the times of ignorance, God winked. But not any. So these are another days of ignorance. Tell your neighbor that in these days, if you don't know the truth, you're bound. You shall know that truth and the truth shall say to you. So don't sit there and say, I'm under ignorance. God, God is winking at me. So let me fornicate. God, I don't know yet that fornication is bad. Oh, no. In the New Testament, because the Holy Spirit sits in you. Do you know why it's no longer an excuse? Because now the Holy Spirit sits in you. And he keeps speaking to you, don't do it. It is wrong. Don't do it. So no more kwebuzavs. Kazole, no. Are we together? So you need to know that background because where I'm going is going to be a bit confusing. So when he returned the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother, she said, I solemnly consecrate my silver to the Lord for my son to make an image overlaid with silver. I'll give it back to you. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Who left their phone here? Run over, run over as you take your phone. Run over. Okay. So after, these are the things who have been here practicing since, since midday. By the way, I clap for them. They've been here practicing since midday. Our teens are learning to serve the Lord diligently. Okay? So she returns, she tells the boy, her son, Make an idol for me out of the silver you've given. So after he returned the silver to his mother, she took 200 shekels of silver and gave them to a silversmith who used them to make the idol. And it was put in Mika's house. Now this man Mika had a shrine. So that's why I had to give you that understanding. Because I told you some time back, if you want to understand the Bible, there are so many st uh, standards through which you read and understand the word of God. In those days, these people were traditional. They had gods. Even Abraham himself served another god before God called him. And that's why God tells him, leave your father's house. Leave your country. Leave your people. I am taking you to a land where it's not familiar at all. And I want to make you my god. To make myself your god. But you need to come from the many. Because they will confuse you. So even Abraham, if you read the story of his father, he, ha he served idols. When you look at the father of the wives of, uh, of Jacob, when you read the story of when they were running away from him, when, when Jacob, Jacob was a stubborn guy, when he was running away from his father-in-law with his two wives, as he kept pursuing them, he was pursuing them because they had taken his idol. And that daughter had stolen the idol. So even the father of the father of the girl from which the man who is going to become Israel is marrying from had an idol. But much as he had an idol, God allowed Jacob, who is anointed, to be a carrier of a generation that is going to be Israel, to come from a family where there is an idol. Why? In the days of ignorance, he winked. He ignored their ignorance because they didn't know the truth. The Holy Spirit hadn't come. So, we see Israel coming out from women who were raised by a father that had an idol. And as they are running away from the father, the daughter is running away with the idol. Meaning she wants to continue with that idol. Okay? So, when this woman makes an idol, 
she takes it, sorry, she takes the silver to the blacksmith and he used it to make an idol and it was put in Mika's house. Now this man Mika had a shrine and he made an effort and some house, household gods and installed one of his sons as his priest. In those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. In those days, kings were like pastors. It wasn't just about you being in the palace and people throw flowers at you and you walk. No, you go and fight battles. You pray for the people. Forget this kingship of today. Okay? This one of today is swagalific. There you had to go on the front line and fight. So in those days, Israel had no king. So everyone did as they saw fit. So they're trying to show you it was the days of ignorance. Okay? And it's a very amazing story. You need to understand it. A young Levite, Levite, Levite from Bethlehem in Judah, who had been living within the clan of Judah, now this is an, an Israelite, left the town in search of some other place to stay. He was looking for a house to rent. Even those days they were rentals. On his way, <laughs> he came to Micah's house in the hill country of Ephraim. Micah asked him, where are you from? He said, I'm a Levite from Bethlehem in Judah. He said, I'm looking for a place to stay. Then Mika said to him, now paying attention, Mika said, Mika who has a shrine? Who doesn't know the God of this other priest? Okay? What does Mika say? Then Mika said to him, live with me and be my father and priest. So Mika is looking for a spiritual father. Now why would Mika be looking for a spiritual father? I, I thought he has a shrine and he has his gods. But much as he has a shrine and his gods, he's looking for a spiritual father. So this makes you understand, how do you live without a spiritual coverage if even a man who doesn't know God understands that it's important to have a spiritual father or a spiritual mother? In his ignorance, he knows it. Okay? So he requests the man, live with me and be my father. Meaning, be my spiritual father and my priest. Okay? And I will give you ten shekels of silver, Aya, your clothes and your food. So the Levite agreed to live with him, and the young man became like one of his sons to him. The boy was younger than Mika, because they are saying he became like one of his sons, but he was a spiritual father. My dad, I was his spiritual mother. I led him to Christ, I baptized him, Whenever he was stuck, he could call me to pray for him through all the moments of sickness. You know, I, I remember sharing with you an experience whereby it got hard to serve him because of the circumstances surrounding everything. But even on the moments I wanted to give up, I remembered I'm his spiritual mother. How can a spiritual mother give up on a spiritual son? So there are moments my dad was stubborn. My mom can tell you. And I cry. I'm like, no, no, mommy, talk to him. Eh? Talk to him. Eh? I cry. And then after drying my tears, I'm like, but I'm a spiritual mother to him. And he acknowledged that. Praise the Lord. So it has nothing to do with age. Someone younger than you can become a spiritual parent. Look at David, young, anointed amongst everyone who was old. So God doesn't look at age. So this boy Mika lived with, sorry, this the Levite priest who is a spiritual father to Mika. The Bible is saying he lived with him, agreed to live with him, and the young man became like one of his sons. He's like one of his sons, but he's his spiritual father. He's like a son, but he's his spiritual father. Meaning this boy physically is young, but in the spirit he is so big. And Mika is looking for someone to cover him in the spirit, despite his ignorance. So ask your neighbor, who covers you in the spirit? Okay? So, Mika inst installed the Levite, and the young man became his priest and lived in his house. Okay? And then something important, verse 13, underline it, verse 13. And Mika said, now I know that the Lord will be good to me since this Levite has become my priest. Now I know that the Lord will be good to me since now I have this Levite as my priest. 
Meaning when someone gets under spiritual coverage, there is a certain blessing they partake by virtue that they have submitted. But look at Mika, he has a shrine. He actually serves other gods, but he understands that this young boy who is like my son has to cover me in the spirit. And when he finally installed him, he makes a statement and says, now I know that the Lord will be good to me since, why? Since the Levite has become my priest. And remember, he has also become his father because he said, become my father and my that's how important a spiritual parent is. If no one has ever told it to you, here I am helping you get to know the truth that you may be set free. Some of you haven't broken through simply because you jump from church to church. You have never settled. So nobody can even say they have authority over you in the spirit. So you need coverage. This man didn't know God, but he knew the principles of God. Praise the Lord. So that is one story. Same story in Judges 18, 1 to 31. It seems long, but we are going to get there. We have to hear the whole story to understand it. Tell me about Tula to say Tule. Lugambo, spiritual Lugambo is better than the other one. Now, in those days, that is, in those, in those days, Israel had no king. And in those days, the tribe of the Danites was seeking a place of their own where they might settle because they had not yet come into an inheritance among the tribes of Israel. Now, God kept settling them slowly by slowly. It wasn't instant. Why? Because you had to first go and fight for the other clan to get their land. Then they also go and fight for you. You see that? So these Danites hadn't yet gotten land. Okay? So the Bible tells us on how they got their land. And in there, we see something very important. So it says, um, they ha where are they? Sorry. In those days, Israel had no king. And in those days, the tribe of the Danites was seeking a place of their own where they might settle because they had not yet come into an inheritance among the tribes of Israel. So the Dianites, who were Israelites, sent five of other leading men from Zorah and Eshto to spy out the land and explore it. These men represented all the Danites. They told them, go explore the land. So they entered the hill country of Ephraim and came to the house of Mika, where they spent the night. When they were near Mika's house, now we are seeing Mika still being in our picture, right? When they were near Mika's house, they recognized a voice of a young Levite. So they turned in there and asked him, who brought you here? What are you doing in this place? Why are you here? He told them that Mika had done for me. Sorry, he told them what Mika had done for them and said, he has hired me and I am his priest. So Mika had hired a spiritual father. Tell your neighbor, never hire a spiritual father, but Mika had to hire. Why must he have to hire? He doesn't serve these people's gods, but because he knows it's important to have, actually let him hire him. Katibwe, you're there, you don't have one. Some people are hiring. Pastor Sunrise is not for hire. We are going to see the disadvantage of hiring, okay? So let's continue. What are you doing in this place? Why are you here? He told them what Mika had done for him. And he said, he has hired me that I'm his priest. And his spiritual father, right? Days of ignorance. In these days of understanding, you can't hire a pastor to be your spiritual father when you have shrines. You remember some gentleman... An artist who, who died and they refused to, was it a Catholic church? A Protestant church refused to bury him because they told them he served other gods. So why? These are days of no ignorance. Some of you are like, no, no, no. It's bad for a church. Some of you are speaking these things out of ignorance. If you have no spiritual parent, hmm, 
wandifanga muna yo msilamu ya, ya, ya kuteka yu. So he told them he has hired me and I am his. There are few, 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 few moments. There is a time a young girl called me that wasn't submitting under this ministry. She had lost a, a, a relative and she called me and requested me to go and officiate and officiate the burial. And I couldn't go. Why? I had an overnight. So I remember telling her, I can't go. But do you know that I could have sent a representative? But the reason I couldn't is because I wasn't a spiritual parent. Where was that woman from? There has to be a church she belonged. Whether Catholic or Protestant or somewhere. So you can't pick Pastor Sandra from anywhere to come and lead her there. Okay? So I couldn't leave the overnight. I couldn't leave my spiritual sons and daughters to go and officiate someone I don't even know or recognize in the spirit. So someone had, so I remember asking them who was their spiritual parent. They told me some, I'm like, yes, yeah, so that person deserves it. They should go and bury her. Praise the Lord. So they say to him, he has, okay, he has hired me and I am his priest. Then they say to him, please inquire of God to learn whether our our journey will be successful. So one way, one of the roles of a spiritual parent is they can inquire for you from the Lord. The people who come, mommy, what do you think God is saying? I'm like, let's go into a fast. And we come up with a solution. So they inquire of you. So that's why Mika wanted a what? A hired spiritual? A hired spiritual father. Because he knows, much as he's ignorant, this man has some wisdom. Because he's, he carries the anointing. Levites, priesthood ran, ran in the Levites family, so he carried the anointing on him. Okay? So, the priest answered them, go in peace, your journey has the Lord's approval. That priest could determine in the spirit that these Danites, if they go and fight to get to this land, they will get it. So that's why Mika saw him as a man of worth. And that's why he hired a spiritual father. Okay? So, the five men left and came to Laish, where they saw the people were living in safety, like the Sidonians, at peace and secure. And since their land lacked nothing, they were prosperous. Okay? Also, they lived a long way from the Sidonians and had no relationship with anyone else. When they returned to Zora, now underline that, I'm going to come back to that. And they had no relationship with anyone else. Underline that. It's something I'm going to talk about later. Are you following? So when they returned to Zora and Eshto, their fellow Danites asked, how did you find things? They answered, come on, let's attack them. We have seen the land. It is very good. Aren't you going to do something? Don't hesitate to go there and take it over. When you go there, you'll find an unsuspecting people and a spacious land that God has put into our hands. The land lacks nothing, what, whatever. The 600 men of Danites, armed for battle, set out from Zora, set out from Zora and Eshto. On their way, they set up a camp near Kiria, Jeremy, and Judah. This is why the place west of this place is called Maneha. Okay? From there, they went on to the hill country of Ephraim and came to Mika's house. We are back to Mika. Tell me, but we are back to Mika. I love making the Bible interesting, so I'm trying to make you... So how did they get the focus? Okay? Verse 14. Then the five men who had spied out on the land of Laish said to their fellow Danites, do you know that one of these houses has an effort. Some household gods and an image overlaid with silver. Remember that silver idol made by the other woman. So these five men tell their friends, that is gossip. Do you know that one of these houses has an effort? Some household gods and an image overlaid with silver. Okay. Now you know, so they tell, now you know what to do. Meaning, 
Okay? So, now you know what to do. So they turned in there and went to the house of the young Levite at Micah's place and greeted him. The spiritual father who is what? Hired. Now, verse 16. The 600 Danites armed for battle stood at the entrance of the gate. The five men who had spied out the land went inside and took the idol, the effort, and the household gods while the priest and the 600 armed men stood at the entrance of the gate. So imagine, these are Israelites, children of God. They are looking for a place to take. Why are they taking an idol? It was dedicated to God. And out of ignorance, God winked. Okay? So when the five men went into Micah's house and took... So the five men went into Micah's house and took the idol. The effort and the household gods, the priest said to them, What are you doing? Now listen attentively. They answered him, be quiet. Don't say a word. Come with us. Be our spiritual father and priest. There's going to be transfer there. I know that it's by ATM or what. Be quiet. Don't say a word. Come with us and be our father and priest. Meaning come and be our spiritual father and isn't it better that you serve a tribe and a clan in Israel as a priest rather than one man's household? The priest was very pleased. Tell your neighbor, Che! The priest was? Can you imagine? Instead of him saying, Ah, you people, I'm under confident with this man. No, he was pleased. Why is he pleased? He has found people of his kind. Secondly, these are going to be many. This is one. So he's so reasoning. So the priest was very pleased. He took the effort. He even stole the guy's goods. He took the effort, the household goods and the idol and went along with the people. Putting their little children, their livestock and their possessions in front of them. They turned away and left now, never hire a spiritual parent. He can betray you. He can sell you anytime. That's why you should never hire. You should be spiritually connected. When you're spiritually connected, they love you a certain way. That they can't give you away. When you go to my spiritual father, he can't give me away. But if he's hired and they tell him, I'm giving you $500, he, will, he may give me away. So this is the problem of hiring. So never hire a spiritual priest. So, a spiritual father, sorry. So putting their little children, their livestock and their possession in front of them, they turned away and left. When they had gone some distance, tell your neighbor, the movie is getting interesting. When they had gone some distance from Micah's house, the men who lived near Micah were called together and overtook the Danites. And they shouted after them. The Danites turned and said to Micah, what's the matter with you that you called out your men to fight. He replied, you took my gods I made and you took my priest and went away. What else do I have? Guys, listen. When this people are telling Mika, why are you shouting for us? Mika tells them, you took the gods I made. You took my priest. What else do I have? Meaning to have a god and to have a spiritual father and to have a priest is so priceless. When you take them away, I have nothing. That's why I'm chasing after you. Much as I don't know God, but I need this spiritual father who I hired. Tell your neighbor that's how powerful a spiritual parent is. That they can even steal him from you. And you begin running after him because he has become a commodity. I bought him. Give him to me. Okay. You took my, the gods I made and my priest and went away. What else do I have? How can you ask what's the matter with you? The Danites answered, don't argue with us. Don't argue with us or some of the men may get angry and attack you and your family will lose your lives. So the Danites went their way. And Mika, seeing that they were too strong for him, turned around and went back home. Sebambi. 
So Bambi, he lost a spiritual father that he has hired. Praise the Lord. But at least he pursued. Why is he pursuing? It's important to have a spiritual parent. Okay? So this is just show you how important you need a spiritual parent in your life. Okay. So he turned and went back home. So they took, now listen, verse 27. Then they took what Mika had made his gods, eh? Because they were ignorant. And his priest. The Bible is acknowledging this priest was the priest of Mika. Okay? Like someone comes and steals me from you and they take me. Can you imagine? I know you can chase. But I know some of you are cowards. So they took that. They took what Mika had made, meaning the gods and his priest, and went to the Laish. Against a people at peace and secure. They attacked them with a sword and burned down their city. There was no one to rescue them. Now, this is very key. Verse 28, it's a full sermon. There was no one to rescue them because they lived a long way from Sidon and had no relationship with anyone else. Tell you about relationships are very important. So these guys were overpowered because of that. The city was in the valley near Beth. The Danites rebuilt the city and settled there. They named it Dan after their ancestors, Dan, their ancestor Dan, who was born in Israel, though the city used to be called Laish. There, the Danites set up for themselves an idol, and Jonathan, son of Goshom, the son of Moses, and his sons were priests of the tribe of Dan until the time of the captivity of the land. They continued to use, they continued to use the idol Micah had made, and all the time the house of God was in Shiloh. But surprisingly, much as they had an idol, God was with them. That's why they were able to beat the other guys. Why? In the days of ignorance, God winked. But what you are seeing here, seriously, is the fact that a spiritual parent is so important and that some people are even stealing him away. Praise Jesus. So how do you make a, get a spiritual parent? You can steal him. I am joking. I have showed you that, that, that of stealing him, you get, they can steal him from you too. But you can seek him out because we see Mika seeking him out. So you can seek him out. How do you seek him out? Through prayer. I have people who tell me they pray to God to give them a spiritual parent and they dreamt about me. Some of them never knew my face and then they saw me on TV and then they came. Okay? So you can seek him out through prayer and ask God, who is my spiritual parent? And he will align you. But then the other thing is, how do you get a spiritual parent? Genesis 45. Ask anybody, do you know this? What have they said? Tell them to clap for the Holy Spirit. So Genesis 45, verse 1 to 8. Genesis 45, verse 1 to 8. We are going to see how another man gets a spiritual parent. Okay? Then Joseph could no longer control. Now this was, if I'm paraphrasing, Joseph, remember, was sold into slavery by his brothers. So years later... Um, his brothers are looking for food and they fall on Joseph, okay? So we are starting from the place where they have met him. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants and he cried out, make everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers and he went and he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Because he was now a big man. Eh? He had authority. He could tell you, he could command to be, you be killed and you're killed. So then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. Because they were afraid of him. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph. The one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land, and for the next five years, there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Praise the Lord. 
So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me a father to Pharaoh, Lord of his entire household and ruler of all Egypt. He made me a father of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is the king. God is making Joseph to be a spiritual father to the king. Tell anybody, there are two types of Pharaoh. The other Pharaoh who said, I will not let them go. This Pharaoh was an improved Pharaoh. Okay? So don't remember the other Pharaoh of Egypt. So, God made Joseph a father to Pharaoh. Now, that is so powerful. Pharaoh is the king of Egypt. Like, he's in control. He has it all. Does Pharaoh need a spiritual father? No, he has it all. But God made Joseph a father to Pharaoh. So God can use someone who is raw in ranking to be a spiritual father to you. To be a spiritual parent to you. So never underlook someone. Because you're rich and they're poor and they're your spiritual parent and you begin looking at them. Leadership comes from God. Leadership comes from God. Okay? So, if you're good at meditating, just meditate on that. Pharaoh has it all. He is the king of Egypt. One of the most powerful nations at those times. It was the America of today. But God saw it wise that Egypt should have a spiritual father. A spiritual. One of our children is an usher. They are chasing a cart. Hey, some of you ushers don't know your job, so someone is helping you. Okay? So it's not you who sent me here, but God. He made me a father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household, and ruler of all Egypt. Much as Pharaoh was the king and had all this in his place, he needed spiritual coverage. Otherwise, all point Egypt could have died because that famine took how many years? How many? So imagine seven years of famine, they would have died. So God, when, jo when God was telling Joseph in a dream, way years back, that you're going to be great, it took time, but it later manifested. Tell your neighbor, it eventually manifests. God is plan eventually. So when he told his father, remember in the story initially, when he was telling his brothers, God showed me all of you were bowing unto me, and I was, my stick was standing. He meant I'm going to be your lead, and you're going to be below me. He meant I am going to be your spiritual parent. So the Bible is giving us revelation that the whole purpose of God is of God for Joseph to come to Egypt was for him to be installed as a spiritual father to the king of Egypt. You see, when the president calls pastors there, do you realize? But he is the president. Why? He recognizes authority. So if the king of Egypt, which was the America of today, God saw that he needed a spiritual parent. Ask your neighbor for you. How about you? Owe chitaro. So that's how important a spiritual parent is, guys. Okay? So we are learning that Joseph's mandate from childhood was to eventually be a spiritual parent to Pharaoh. Okay? So, how do you get a spiritual parent? parent. God can bring them to you. Because Pharaoh didn't seek. God brought. Are you seeing the difference? Mika and the Danites sought so you can seek and ask. There are those who are brought. You don't know how you reached here. Somehow you're here. And Pastor Sandra is your spiritual parent. So you know where to fall. Okay? Are we together? Okay. Now, Let's look at a relationship between a spiritual child and a spiritual parent. Okay? Look at the story of Elijah and Elisha. Go with me to the Second Kings chapter 2, NIV. Second Kings. Elijah was a spiritual parent to Elisha. Okay? Second Kings chapter 2, verse 1 to 17. And we want to see 
what is God's motive to spiritual parenting? Because some people don't know. Okay? 1 to 17. Are you getting me? When the Lord was about to take Elijah to heaven in a wheel wind, Elijah and Elisha was on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said, to, now follow through the whole story. There is a lot we are going to learn here, but you need to have listened, okay? Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? So these prophets, of course, God does nothing without telling his prophets. So they had seen it in the spirit that Elijah is leaving. So Elisha says, yes, I know, replied. So be quiet. Nababuniza. Then Elijah said to him, stay here. Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. Listen properly. What is happening? The spiritual father gets to a place and tells the spiritual son, stay here. God has sent me somewhere. The spiritual son is saying, I am not leaving you. Wherever you go, I go. Jesus said that where your, your, where, where your father is, there you should be. You know that scripture? Like you have to be an ardent follower. Praise the Lord. Why? There is power in ardency. And some of you have seen it. How many have seen the, power, the fruits of being ardent? Raise up your hands. How many? Raise up to Babylonia. Everybody has seen the power of being ardent, right? So we are going to know that. Today, if you didn't know, you who skip, skip. So as sure as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. I like the fact that Elijah never told him, go, leave me alone. He left him, meaning he was under test. Can you insist and follow me or you can give up on me? The answer had a lot to do with the future of Elisha, guys. Praise the Lord. So the company of prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, stay here. The Lord had sent me to Jordan. Has sent me to Jordan. This is the third time Elijah is telling his spiritual son, stay here. I go on an assignment. The spiritual son replied, as surely as the Lord lives and you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Tell anybody about the two of them walked on. They call it the power of agreement. Okay? Fifty men from the company of the prophets went. Some of you, when I went to La Bonita, you stopped coming. You came when I came to Namuongo. Chai! And you missed something there. There was a transition in the spirit. There was a transition in the spirit. Remember when we came here, the first service was about what? God is revealing the earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of who are the true sons of the road redemption ministry. They were getting to be revealed. Who, if you notice very well, there are people that left us and never followed us to the promised land because God was separating the wheat from the chaff. Some of you don't know these things. But because we see by the spirit, we understand so some of you came up with stories. Road redemption is a good day. Road redemption is a good day. Do you know we bought more 100 shares last week? How many shares are empty? Tabitha, are all the 100 shares here? Are they? Where is Tabitha? What is she saying? Where are they? They are behind. But Sunday, almost all of them were now Sunday is for spiritual daughters and sons. I'm joking. <laughs> People are going to stone me. <laughs> and Elijah said to him, but we bought more 100 shares. And why? Because on Sunday services, 
we could end up hiring more 50 chairs here. So when we bought 100 chairs last week, in, on this Sunday, 70 of them were full. What are you saying? 30 tent behind you is new. Tell your neighbor, we are expanding. Outwardly, it seems as if we are perishing. Inwardly, we are being... Yeah? Financially, we are growing. So, when we transitioned from Imperial to La Bonita, there was kind of a break. It was funny. But surprising, that's the year God worked most in my history in ministry so far. The time of separation is when God worked most. And as we crossed over, just those people that followed me, by virtue, became spiritual sons and daughters. And the results are evident. Like, there are things that are spiritual, you can't even just explain for someone to understand. Okay? So, there is power in ardency. Okay? So, and he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. The two of them. If you're a spiritual child, if I go to Dubai, you have to come on. <laughs> this Saturday, I'm going to be at Pastor Gembe's church speaking to the singles. I'm invited. Singles, you have to follow me, yo. Maybe your blessing is fine. Maybe finally you're going to meet some son of Jesus. We shall give you a program, okay? On, on, on Friday, we shall give you a program. Praise the Lord. Okay. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. The Lord, the Lord has. Stay here. The Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live. I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. The people who fell off when there was a scandal in the ministry. You know ministries have scandals. There was a scandal. Pastor Sandra is Illuminati. Hey! Some fell off. Those, the Bible says, let me show you something here. Some of us have understood our course very well. And when you leave, at times we just clap. Let's see something. Gone are the days when we used to break over certain things. The Bible says he has delivered us from all our fears, right? So some of you have this tendency. Let's pursue them. Mm -mm, we don't. Did I call any of you? Yeah, where did you come from? Ask your neighbor, where did you come from? <laughs> Pastor Sandra is asking. <laughs> Hey, where did you come from? Answer me. Yeah? Mm. My prayers. Okay, go with me to the book of First John chapter 2, verse 19. She said that you have Okay, verse 19. They went out from us but they do not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. When you understand that, even when you're dumped like a hot potato, you will sing glory to the Most High God. When someone says, it is ending in tears today, I prophesy. You begin saying, holy, holy, holy. But some of you hit depression instead. You want scripture to be fulfilled in your life and you want testimony. There is no testimony without a cross. Praise the Lord. Okay. He replied, as surely, I'm on verse 6, as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up. Now let's see the anointing the spiritual father carried. Tell your neighbor there is going to be an impartation as we are reading now, now. Okay? So, the spiritual father, Elijah, took his cloak 
after this man is tested three times whether he can still follow his spiritual father, something is about to happen because the man is ardent. Okay? So, Elijah and Elisha stopped at the Jordan. Elijah, who is the spiritual father with, with an anointing, okay? With a mantle on him. Took his cloak and rolled it up and stuck, struck the water with it. And the water divided to the right and to the left and the two of them crossed over to the dry land. Elijah, who is the spiritual father of Elisha, carried so much anointing and power that if he wants to cross the Red Sea, Mujemga Mabu get a boat, balance the boat. For him, he gets a coat, strikes it on the water, and the water obeys and divides. Some of you need to understand the kind of graces on your spiritual parents' lives. When you understand it, you'll pursue it and get it. But if you don't, and you just see just Nakaziba Sandra by Nana showing up here every day, they don't ayamba the wig, they don't ayamba the weave, they don't know one they don't do that day. You will miss out on certain things. What grace do I carry? Pursue it. What grace do I carry? Someone tell me. Raise up your hands. We're not in a bar. Can we have a microphone? For onlineers to hear. I want to see whether you know. So that if you don't know, I should tell you that truth. That the truth may say to you fully. Can we have an usher running faster, faster? That is my son. In whom I'm well pleased. Okay. Who, who know the kind of grace upon my life? Just raise up your hands. And see how many people we are going to have. One, two, three, four, five. Eh, you're ten. No, we don't have time. We shall go with five. Okay? Let's start from my daughter in yellow. And you tell us why you think so. Why am I asking you this? The Bible says, a man living epistle read by all men. So some of you should read me. If you can't read me, then you don't know me. Praise God. Amen. My spiritual mother right there has a spirit of quickening. That every time I go on my knees, I pray for it. Mm. She dated for three months. Mm. And I've so far dated for four. I'm not dating for more than six months. Mm. Uh -huh. I'm You're partaking right. of that. Every time I go on my knees, I'm like, my spiritual mom dated for three months. And in the fourth month, she was getting wedded. And here she is. Uh, and here she is. Counting more years. Yes. Our, when she started ministry within one year, it was already blossoming. Mm. Trust me, I'm partaking of that grace. And every time I go on my knees, I have to say that. And it has worked for me. Tell, them how, tell, they'll, tell them how you've been quickened in your career. <laughs> She's one of those spiritual children I know very well. <laughs> in short words. Yeah. So basically, I came to this ministry. I think some of you have heard my story. The day I called Pastor Sandra, I didn't even have rent. Of like, I called her to pray for me to help me get 170K for rent. Uh, I think that was the, when I joined this ministry, I was still at uh, that. Imperial. Imperial. That's the first and the last Sunday service we had. And that's the first time I came to that place. So the next time we went to this place we were talking about, and La that's bonita. why I got my first deliverance. I'll never forget that place. Mm. It really, really carried me. So at that time, I was still on like a contract. Where I think they were giving us 370. I was on that contract for only six months. Others had been there for two years. But because of the grace that I carry when I was in that company, they also put them on staff. Wow. That was because of Pastor Sandra. Guys, you people have seen the grace of God upon my life. As if that wasn't enough. Uh, when we went to when we went to that contract, we were only, we were only four ladies. But I, I want to tell you that in those four ladies, you guys, I'm favored. I'm blessed, you people. I don't know. When I told that I, I go to office without a dress, when I come back, someone says, oh, I saw a nice dress. This, it is here. I bought it for you. I saw a nice shoe. I've seen it. It is there. Let me get it for you. You guys, the grace of God has been upon my life. I tell every month my salary increases. Every I month. I have never gotten the same salary. That spiritual daughter of mine, every month her salary increases. Yeah. See your life. But guys, I want to tell you if, if there is one thing, stop moving from church to church. I want to tell you before we got to Sunday service, I tried to go somewhere, but man, things failed to work. Who is the man? <laughs> Joking. 
I'm correcting your language. <laughs> I'm sorry. Things really <laughs> failed to work. And from that time, I've never gone to any other church. This is the only church I pray from. If I don't come here, I have to be online. If I miss online, I have to listen to the sermon. You guys, I know the word. Like, you cannot lie to me. We were someone, someone was preaching, and they were like, but you have to go back on the My pastor said, I am a new creation. That I'm is a my spiritual nation. daughter who listens to no, the no, words. No. You cannot lie to me. You guys, if you sit and listen to pastor, you guys, you just have to be ardent. Listen to her. Follow her steps. You your life guys, will not remain the same. You you guys, guys, it will be not. There. Tell them how your salary is tremendously increasing this month, A and D. Yeah. Today she gave me a testimony. <laughs> So, so there was a client I pursued last year. He's one of the big clients. If you know those Bagaga Kwa Galana people. I work with an investment company. If you've heard of Unitrust and the dollar funds, that's the company I work with. So when you bring a client and they invest with the company, they add on to your salary. That's why I say that my salary increases every month. Meaning your salary cannot remain the same. That commission that you earn on that client is added on to your salary. So every month your salary cannot remain the same unless you're not a hard worker. No, because yeah. the Lord, the Bible says the Lord prospered Joseph in yes. prison because yes. he was with him. Yes. Therefore, in your company, who can't yeah. get that phrase yeah. every day? That's you true. get it every day because yeah. the Lord is with you, because you're under the right spiritual coverage of quickening. Yeah. Tell your neighbor every month, yeah. your salary can increase. Yeah. So I was still coming. I pursued that client last year in Feb, you guys. I remember we went to speak. I was like, how can you take me to speak? And I present you and you do not really invest. That client told me. I went there. I met him. We had a uh, discussion. He filled in the forms and he said he was going to invest 700 million. You can imagine the smile I had as going back to office. So after opening the account, the guy said, I've invested the money somewhere else. I was really so broken. I even gave up on that guy. So this, uh, this week, uh, last so, week. So there came the week of the good of news. The good news. I was online, guys. I wasn't here. I was online. But Pastor said it is confirmed. This is the week of good news. It was on Tuesday. My manager said, do you remember your client, Ephraim? I'm like, of January. Of Feb last year. Last year. Uh, yes. But I'm now like, ah. this week of good news. I'm like, are you sure that guy is still there? Then, he, then she was like, he's from calling me right now that he's investing 790 million. So my daughter's salary is increasing bigger next, this month. Yeah. As if that wasn't enough. Today she called me and she was like, he's also investing in the dollar fund. I'm like, glory to the most high He's also not saying, Tabagambi. Yeah, that's money. That's commission that is added onto your salary every month. And I really thank God because in that company, like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, but mm -hmm. God has really elevated me, has blessed me. And they asked me, Nayego, Sibo, Sibo, Siba, which have you been talking about? Remember here, I'm moving in the six days. It was a couple of months. Six days, Monday. Monday. <laughs> Monday. So you're yeah. showing them your God. Yes, and when they see me, they're like, Hey, Nayeka, I wonder why you're going to call that. I'm not going to call that. I'm not going to call that. I'm not going to call let me just kneel down. Mommy, thank you so, so much for allowing to be my mother. I don't know, but I really love you so much. I love you and too. And I promise to make you proud. Mommy, I have to make you proud because you have been there for me, you have loved me, you've supported me. You're the mother that I, that I didn't have in Kampala. Guy. Thank I you so humbled. much. May God bless you and bless your husband. You I want bless my husband you to be like your husband. He will be and more Amen. in a double portion. Amen. Glory Praise to God. the Lord. Someone last week joked and told me, but Musumba, they should put Mr. Banana in a museum. So that men, so that men come and see the last speech of good men. Of good men who, has, who have remained in this generation as species. And I'm like, fire, he's not the only good man. Okay? There are so many. And my spiritual daughters have good marriages. Those that I've seen get married. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, I'm proud to say. So she, she, she recognizes there's a spirit of quickening. If you look at my ministry, it's not ordinary. Okay? Yes, my dear. I praise God, brethren. Amen. I'm called Justin Kamkama. Mm. Our Mugole <laughs> is in the house. Where is your man? No, he's up country. Sorry, you couldn't He's up country. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a lot. I will brief them. Okay. First, I joined this ministry in, in two weeks. Eh? Mm. I got a job. Mm. In I two was weeks? just passing by. Eh? Mm. Someone was like, what are you looking for? I was like, I want a job. She was like, start tomorrow. 
So I she got a job in instantly. Details. Okay. After, we are going to cut the story short because we are still going on with us someone. Yeah, after, mm. after, after three weeks again, she promoted me to a manager that was doubling my salary. After two weeks, she got a job. After three weeks, she was promoted. Salary so increased. Uh -huh. after, uh, after one month, after, after, uh, after five years, uh, sorry, after five months, mm. I got a better job. It was tripling my salary. After three what? After five months. Five months, month, the salary triples. <laughs> two balaga, I'm a footer, I got you a no. Go on, Muziba, Maso Gakolechi. We are trying to show you the so arranging started, that is here. I mm. started the, uh, the physical. Uh, Attending physically. Yes with you mm. so that was achieved in 2020 2021 that uh, uh, all that was happening in that short period of time mm. uh, also uh, i've been favored along the way i can't break it down in so many mm. uh, also my marriage I, I i've always said when i started i knew i was meant to be here so i was like i have to get married i won't date long Two months are enough. So you dated for two months? Yeah, because I was supposed wow. to have my wedding in December, but because my dad passed away, I had It was a postponed. So we had to keep... Uh, the devil was fighting here and there, but it wasn't really long. So how long did you date when the devil kind of extended you? It your was two months. My spiritual daughter who got wedded last three weeks ago, Mumujukira, she dated for just two months. Ask your neighbor who is still dating for seven years. See your life. Oh! <laughs> so, if your spiritual mother dated for three months, what are you doing dating for seven years? Are you a course in biology that needs to be studied? So, proposing, give the microphone to the newest Mugole in the house. I want to know how long she dated before she got engaged. Give her the mic. And actually, they are two. Give them both the mic. Let's speak to someone dating for the eighth year to, to wake up. Don't play with something called the anointing, you guys. I'm helping open your eyes. Some of you are still blind. Wake up. Where is my Mugole? Stand slowly, slowly. Tell them. How long did you date? Just tell me that story. Praise God, church. Amen. Uh, I can really testify to that. There is uh, a quickening spirit in this place. And uh, uh, first of all, I, I was stubborn. Uh, Pastor knows. I, I was really stubborn that uh, it was already there, but I kept on pushing it away. And I remember one day she prays for me, and she's like, Gift, I see you in your season, but I'm really praying for you that you will not miss it out because of pride. And I think the only issue I had was pride, but the thing was already in place. Mm. So that day I tell my husband to be... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That day you tell your, your fiance, your My husband fiance, to be, that you've accepted to date him. That I've accepted to date him. You uh -huh. guys, this guy tells me, gift, I am ready. When do we see your parents? That's what my husband told me. The day I said I accept to date you, he said, let's set the day, let's set the day for the kuchala, for the kwanjula, for the wedding. We were dating while doing the mikolo preparation. <laughs> That is the kind of God. The Bible says the spirit of God is a quickening. Why would you get married at a point where makeup falls off your face? It should be in your eyes of your youth. Yes. And, uh, and, and so by gift, the way... Gift, I want to know. How long did you date before the engagement comes on the finger? Before he must pops have up? been like... Okay, serious, serious dating mm. after seeing you. No, that tell us that. Like like, like, <laughs> 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 How long did you date? Uh, 
how long did you date before the man proposed? Pastor, I need to first check my phone and get the actual month. We are because waiting. I remember my, my fiancé wasn't in the country by then. Hey, hey, he yeah. wasn't in the country. <laughs> Yes, he, he wasn't in the country and I remember something Her was happening. Journey, you're now, but <laughs> okay, let's continue. <laughs> so, uh, I think it must have been like two or, two, two or one and a half months real. Tell your neighbor one or two, you can bet two. Let's round off. <laughs> 1.5 round off, you get two. <laughs> Two months, my daughter is engaged, and, and this and, year and, we are and, planning a wedding. Go, oh. Pastor. By the way, another thing. Eh? Got away. And I think we really need to pray for it because I'm. I think I'm very stubborn. Mm. Because if it wasn't total for testimony. Me, no, Pastor. Honestly, mm. if it wasn't for me, it would be done by with everything by now. That is that is like the wedding would have happened already. No, I mean the kuchala, the everything. Because but we are just things are ready. Yeah, that's true. We are just walking in our testimony. And guys, love is a beautiful thing. Hey, hey, hey! Tell your neighbor, have you heard? So if you're my daughter and you're dating for seven the seventh year, come and see me. There is a problem. First, I had forgotten also another thing. Tell us. Meanwhile, they told me yesterday I should make a list of the things I want. By the end of this week, I'll get the money I want. Eh hey, eh hey. Tell your neighbor, those are the men we want. Those ones. Do you remember in the beginning of the year, I said this is the year of the Lord's favor. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. He's going to bring men that are able, people that carry prophecy that they should come and fulfill in your life. Some of you should go back to that someone. There's a lot to download. I'm a thank you gift. My other daughter, they are going to engage. Is she there? How long did Christine date? Wanji? Call my daughter Christine and tell her, Pastor is asking, how long did you date before engagement? We shall give her testimony by fire, by thunder. <laughs> this, is a, uh, this is a proud spiritual mother. Whenever my children win, I show the devil that we are here. Uh -uh. We will show up. Uh, Pastor, uh, uh, I know when, but the things didn't really take long. It must have been like six months or five. Six months or five. And she's engaged and she's getting married. I'm showing you my spiritual children. Because you have to define who you are. Or why you hired me, you better now stop hiring me. Some of you hired me. See your life, stop hiring. They are stealing me. Okay. Praise Lagapa. God. Amen. Three people have talked about the quickening grace in this place. I'm talking about the wealthy grace. I was at uh, to work last week. I was mm. listening to you, mommy. And my boss was passing by. She was like, is that Pastor Sandra? Mm. I was like, yes, she's your pastor, yes. She was like, I was like, w w why are you saying that? And I watched her on TikTok when, she was, when you were talking about the waiting lounge, when you're waiting for the lift to go up. And she was like, eh, she's an, she has a lift in her home. Yeah. I'm like, my pastor is wealthy. I have a wealthy pastor. So, mommy, I have a wealthy pastor. I have a wealthy pastor. I receive. You can't be a teacher and your kids don't go to school. You can't be a poultry keeper and you can't eat chicken. You can't be a saloon maker and you repeat the same wig every day. You can't work in lifts and you don't have it in your home. Are we together? That's not who we are. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Another tremendous thing that happened. Mm. Actually, I'm sorry I didn't invite you for my introduction. No, we, it's but okay. We it understood. it happened in two days. And it was really beautiful. An introduction in just two days. So Preparation. Everything was very good. Some of you sit for wedding meetings for eight months. Money, money, money. These ones, when they said we want to introduce in two days, the budget.
budget was laid and they went to the parents. What are you saying? Yeah, it was to the extent that everyone who came was like, is this deco for 10 million? And they had good deco, by the way. So everything really went on very well. And even the wedding was really good. Colorful. And, and she was a single mother, by the way. Now misses who? Asimwe. Asimwe. <laughs> Have you checked out her husband? <laughs> Ask your neighbor, what? Who are you dating? <laughs> we are here to brag about our God. Should I continue preaching? Should I continue preaching? I finish from here. <laughs> no. No, we can have part two in Friday. This is um, there's a lot to share here that I can't just pass very fast. But let's see if we finish, we continue. Uh huh. Okay, I'll be very quick. Praise God, church. Amen. I'm so privileged to be in this ministry. I'm one of those backbencher. Okay, but children. you know you came a bit closer. Okay, I'm always here, but mm. I, my personal, I've never come to see mommy personally, but I follow ardently. Okay. I came here uh, some time back. Actually, I was one of those online. Deb First, pause a bit. Where is my daughter from, Lyra? Who? Who? Where is she? She's not here. Where is her sister? My dear, you must testify again. <laughs> mm. Who used to be in those WhatsApp uh, groups? Mm. But I kept on following through. Mm. I want to talk about the grace in this place, on oh, Mami Sandra. The, the grace of marriage, good mm. marriages. Mm. Hey, first show them the ring. First do like this. Yes. First do like this. <laughs> first do like this. Now you can talk. <laughs> yes. This is my 10th year in marriage. I'm making my 10th anniversary in mm -hmm. December 27th. Mm -hmm. okay. But before my, my marriage was a, a what? I'd say a battlefield. Like the senior moto, okay, like those days. Okay. But uh, under this ministry, they nurture you, they tell you, they tell you how to submit, they teach you how to submit to be a good wife. And trust me, you people. Ever since I started being a submissive wife. Being submissive does not mean you're stupid, yeah? No. Be, be, being a submissive wife and following my husband as my head and, the, and so was, and all that were taught. And no kusiri sakumu I've seen what love is. I've been loved by the best. Wow, by the best. <laughs> I by the mommy. best. <laughs> Underline that. Yes. I always see mommy, mommy, mommy Sandra and, and the husband papa. and mm. papa. I always they are like you you part of my idols like I look at you and I'm like I want to be that kind of marriage mm. you probably have a marriage that everyone around admires like. <laughs> I, I I now I you walked into the ministry when the marriage was bad yes. you walk then when you walked in it got better but Why? after following ardently mm, mm. after in the, the anointing in this place on my Miss Sandra you will not go wrong Amen. you will not you will not be that fighting wife. Amen. Thank you so much. And of course, uh, we've developed. People, Amen. we've developed. Amen. Those, those days of arguing and you, they bring this and you say, no, um, I mean, I go this way because you're always arguing. You do not mm. go, go in front. Mm. You, don't, you don't develop. That's so true. we've really developed, you guys. I will not say what we've had, we've to mm. fought, but for sure we've really developed. Thank you so much, mommy. We're you're really welcome. grateful and you're we welcome. still... Be, we will always go wherever you go. Amen, <laughs> you. amen, amen. I'm going to Dubai. You're coming. Get your passports. There's someone saying you're coming and you have no passport yet. Get it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Also, for me, also I have mine that have been specific on you. Okay. Hallelujah. One was about the... And guys, wait. I always love being intentional. Why are we sharing this? Because we are trying to see that a child has to understand what the father has. Remember when Elijah asked the son, what do you want? He said, I want a double portion. Because he knew what the father does what? So you, 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 as a spiritual child, you have power to claim what your spiritual parent has and have it more. Okay? Actually, mm. So when I came here, like I could see the way... First of all, like the teaching grace that you have, that okay. revelation that you have. Mm. 
that you can you can read the bible and you think you understand but when you come here and you teach and it's like what is this mm. where has it come from mm. that thing has really opened me up spiritually Glory like this God. story you've been reading actually those are things you don't buy with money but they are so priceless mm, mm. let me just this very reading of, of judges 17 i remember i read that story but i understood it in another way i didn't mm. know that it was about spiritual parents and you know, the way it has opened me and taken me to another level. Glory to God. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. And then that very unique one, one time I was saying that, like, I've been to churches where the, the pastor can say, God told me yesterday, you know, I had the other week, I had a dream. But for you can sit here and then you begin bringing the praise to God. People, do, you, do you see how you can admire things like to be, to be like her? Mm. There is a and way guys, we want to see anointed men and women rising up in this ministry. Okay? So mm. for me, actually, I have, I have reached a state where if you're going to call me tomorrow, I'll get to know today. Amen. If there's anything Amen. I get to know. At times even, mommy, like mm. you're preaching all the songs or what here, I get to know them. Wow. Mm. Or if because I want... Because you're connected in the spirit mm. a certain way. Mm. There is a song that was sung this evening. It quote me the all of yesterday, and I was like, oh, well, "When are they singing it? This one about you? Where God is it? God alone or what?" When the sister came here and sang about it, I was just down and say, "God, thank you so much." So mm. there is a way I connect. Confirmation I get in the spirit. Before. Yes. Even Mama have told you some of the things. Yeah, I remember. For me, that is the grace. I think. I have gotten in this place. Glory and to God. God, and that is priceless. It has no price on. Uh -huh, that, that, that dot of mine, stand up. Summarize in three minutes. Just summarize and say, I got a man this day and this and this happened. Your sister, is she here? She's yeah. not. Okay. The devil is a liar. Praise God, church. Mm, we are one of the short stars. Mm, call me Sharon. I'm here to testify on behalf of my sister. My sister joined the ministry, I think, in one month. She was a single mother. She has been a single mother for 16 years. And the girl is here, mommy. What is that beautiful girl? <laughs> She's here. Aww. Oh. <laughs> oh, love you. Love you. Mm -hmm. So the mother has been a single mom for 16 years. And... When I brought her to church, I think in one month, the father to this girl came back and married her in one week. One month. Foundations are broken. And the man that left you 16 years comes back and marries you. At what age? At 50 years. At 50 years, yes. Actually, 52. At 52 years. Yes. That's some, and they were here yesterday, by the way. Together, they come. They, 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 is the husband here? I think he didn't come. They come here every Sunday, hand in hand, holding each other, hugging each other. And I'm like, that is the anointing. Let it flow. Praise the Lord. So, guys, there is God in this place. One month. And I remember that day when that daddy got delivered. That service, God told me to go and touch everybody. It was a Sunday service. I remember leaving the power pit and began touching everyone. I could just tell you, this row come, this row come. So I got tired. I, be, I went to their tent. She was seated there, right? Yes. I touched her. She was slain. That was it. So all I can tell you guys, be ardent. Some of you, the families are bound just because you're not coming to church. Stand in the gap for your families. Preach. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> tell us about you now. <laughs> but in three minutes... I got a man this day, and this and this happened. Just tell us. So, when I joined the Road to Redemption Ministry, no one brought me here. I found mommy on UBC. Can we clap for people who support the UBC and Magic 100 projects? You're doing a great job. So, when I came, I think in... So I think in eight months to one year, I'm a single mom of two, a girl and a boy. They are here. 
So, oh, love you guys. I've been a struggling mother. Like, life was hard. But when I joined the Road to Redemption ministry, there is a quickening spirit in this place. I saw God. Ah, good is the problem, you. <laughs> so when I joined, God answered my prayer because of. After been how long had you been in the ministry before the breakthrough? Eight months. Okay, what happened? God brought for me a man. Which color? <laughs> I'm a good interviewer. Which color? Because I see is, black people here. He's a white man from Germany. Hey! Tell your neighbor they are also international husbands. So, since then... You're looking at Mchala Womuzungu. Hey! Mchala Womuzungu, oye! Oye! Tell us. So, since... Life changed. My kids went to a better school he began paying their fees he's paying school fees actually my school fees comes one week after they have got holidays you've never met the man physically no you date online yes he is in germany he sends fees a week before the time yes. for your two kids yes tell your neighbor you know, no. and give your neighbor a high five continue <laughs> and say, Lele Kamba, we chance him to ping. Say, I tap. Mommy said, No tapping. No, what brings those blessings? Ardency. Ardency. Mm. Make those seats yours. Now she has become Pastor Sandra. I give her the authority. Amen. Mm. <laughs> so, guys, there is God in this place. Tell them about how the Mzungu paid your driving. Pa like, when you girl, say something. <laughs> <laughs> Damuzungu pays rent. He pays rent. He pays school fees, medical bills. He took me to a driving school. I have a driving license. I'm waiting for the car. Hey! She's getting off Boda Bodas very soon. Uh -huh. Amen. Is that all? So, mommy, I mm. want to testify for my sister as well. Mm. Another she one. was she was supposed to be here today. This is another sister or no, this one, the mother the one, of this girl. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's the a quickening family. spirit in her life. Since then, mm. everything has changed. Wow. Now men are coming, they're saying, You lady, your life has changed. You're looking young. Can we marry you? Can you? Wow. She's delivered in the spirit. She, so now she's getting visible. Yes. May she not get confused. And then, tomorrow she has an interview with the Ministry of Internal Affairs. And she'll get it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So there's a quickening spirit, guys. Be ardent in church. Some people Follow here, the you word. get someone physically for eight years and they've never given you even a hundred K. Someone is just online. They pay all your bills from head to toe. We are waiting for that car. When it arrives, tell me we have to, to, to ride it here. Amen. It will come and make a U-turn and pass and park here. Amen. What are you saying? What are you saying? We have to glorify God. Amen. So, mommy, I want to say thank you so much for being a mother to us. You're welcome. May God really bless you. We are Amen. seeing God in our family. Amen. So, as I talk, I'm now the manager of Lira Region. Everyone is calling me to say, how did your sister break this generational curse? For 52 years, is, she's married. Everyone wants to know which kind of church is that. We want to know the pastor. And you guys are here in Kampala. You're joking. They are there and they are sleeping. Road redemption. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't know Kampala. Lule. Praise the Lord. <laughs> wow. Where are other people? Okay. <laughs> and why I think the grace of God is on your life is because of how you do your things, how you live your life, and how 
your form is how how you are wow glory to god zoe sees her mother doing things a certain way and she admires and she keeps telling me i want to be like you when i grow up receiving Jesus' name thank you zoe uh-huh Praise God, church. Is that Tala? She looks like her. Praise the Lord. No, why? Oh, I thought you were taking it to Tala. Okay. Praise God. Amen. Wherever Tala is, I thank God I look like him. You must see her. <laughs> is Tala here? Where is she? Where that is? Wow. Hey, you must connect today. From today on, I join you as sisters in the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, mommy. You're Praise welcome. God, church. Amen. Um, for me, the grace that you have that I've partaken of mm. is the grace of prophecy okay. and the word of God. Okay. The word of God never comes to you, through you, and goes back void. Amen. For me, Amen. it has come through in very many ways. One of them is a wedding that I, uh, happened five months ago. How long did you date? Uh, I dated for only four months. Tell your neighbor, have you had? Sh show us the ring. Do like this. Has someone seen the ring? Yes. Okay. You dated for four months. I dated for four months. And my husband is not from here. He's based in uh, Australia. He's a, which color is he? He's dark. Okay. Yeah, but I like him the way he is. No, we're not looking at color here, but we wanted to know. You know, when you're giving a testimony, you give all the details. Mm. Yeah. Um, when, when I was praying, um, when I joined the ministry, I joined the ministry for four years, but okay, three and eight months mm. through UBC. It was out of. Uh, People, can we clap for the financial partners? Do you know for four years in a row we've been on YouTube, UBC and Magic 100 as a radio and we've never failed to pay? Every month. And it's a lot of money, guys. A lot, but every month that money is paid. So these are the products of UBC. Yeah, I, I didn't have subscription that time for DSTV. So Glory to God. I started watching TV and I landed on you. There was that song which would come in and, you know, I, I had it when I was bathing and I came out in a towel and I sat. I remember that day the word came in and it was about being still. Okay. And from that time round, I, I really, really picked it up. I was a single mother for nine months. I already testified about that. And I came out of single, mother single motherhood because of that prophecy that you, you gave us from here. Glory to God. So, um, I really, really thank God. The man I have is not just any man. We dated for four months. The day he came is the day he proposed, meeting physically. We dated online for The day he months. came from which country? From Australia. From Australia is the day he proposed. Did tell your neighbor, are you seeing how it should be done? And it was at the airport. Hey! For your dating for the seventh year. Be there. I, I didn't expect that. Okay, I was introduced to his family earlier. And after the proposal, of course, it took me a month to introduce him home as well. I wanted to learn him more. Mm. But it's, it's, it's not just the man. It's the kind of man. Yes. I had always prayed to have someone like Papa mm. who would take me up with my The only baby. man in the museum. <laughs> I, I want to thank daddy at this time because you've given us hopes of getting that the good best men money. exist can we clap for my husband the one and only in the museum mommy this man did not just come in my life and you know the moment we got to know each other he started sending money to me before he pardon came. He started sending me up. The here. moment you began knowing each other. Now, that's another grace on the road to redemption ministry. Because even me, the moment I asked Mr. Banyana, he paid my rent. 
So the kind of men we date with the girls in the road redemption ministry have money. Yes. So please, when you see a broke man, he's not the one. <laughs> I'm joking. There are those who don't have it in cash, but it's in the spirit. Believe with them. Amen. I, so the man began sending you money. Yeah, like after a month. I was surprised. I was like, you don't even know me mm -hmm. physically. Then he just told me I prayed for you. And I know you're going to be my wife. So those men who are like Adam, God brings who? Eva to him. Adam didn't. He said, give me six months to see. I want to study her for eight years. He's like, wow. Bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. I will call her Eva. Someone join me. I will call her who? Eva. Now when you meet a person, he's like, ah. Uh, I forgot those things. But no, I hate that word. They are still understanding you. What? Okay, are you so complicated? Okay. <laughs> and uh, you know, like I said, I was a single mother, struggling, of course, as usual, mm. in your own ways. And uh, as I talk now, mm. my son has been shifted from the school where he was to a better school. Wow. Fees is paid on By time. a man who is not the actual father. Yeah. That's yeah. the grace as well. Single mothers, are you tapping? Yeah. We get men who love our children like they are own. Not these ones who say, take the child to the grandmother. Those ones, when you see them, you run because they are not the type we date. Uh-huh. And you know, because I was struggling and trying to ask the parents of the boy, all that, and with all the assets we had lost, mm. that side, when I stopped asking, they also started coming back, of course, now. But that's, that, that's okay, because the, the kid gets double fees. Double? Yeah. Wow. And I'm able to sponsor other children that were under my care. But Can I you imagine? It, so. You who once used to struggle, now you're sponsoring others. Yeah. The spirit of multiplication. But now you people, I want to show you the kind of God I serve. So when you're in the prayer room claiming, stop these funny, funny prayers. God, give me ten. Are we together? I can, I can surely testify that my marriage is beautiful. Amen. And love is a very beautiful thing for those who are upcoming. Amen. I don't ask him. I've never asked him to give me anything. He sends. He sends. Just like Mr. Bayingan. Yes. The, the, the only difference is that for me, I don't have an open check. For me, I just see. It is well, whether check or cash, it is money. I just see a message and then you see, I've sent you something. You know? And it's not just something for me. Sometimes the money is actually half of what I get as salary or even more, depending wow. on his budget from the other side and the projects we are doing. So your salary is supplemented? Yes, my salary is supplemented and I'm able to do the things that I'd always wanted to do without struggling. Wow, tell your neighbor their testimony is in the road to redemption. <laughs> People just don't speak, but they are there. Mm. And, yeah, and mommy, okay, today I'd come knowing that we're going to testify about good news. Mm. The spirit of quickening is here. And Amen. like I said, the word... The, the spirit of prophecy and the word is real. Amen. On Monday, last Monday, when you said good news was going to come, mm -hmm. I'm the product of the good news also. What happened? I went back to work that day, and uh, after, because it was a Monday, Tuesday, we worked on Tuesday, on Wednesday, I was called, and I was given a letter that doubles my salary. Hey! Tell your neighbor, this is the week of good news. Now let me download it for them. You have a job that has given you twice what you've been earning. Yes, on top of that, your husband brings half of that and drops it on your account. Girl, you're rich. Amen. Girl, you're in money. Amen, mommy. And I know I'll be richer. Amen. Because your pastor is so, you, so must you. Yes, I will. Tell your neighbor poverty is not our portion. Amen. Amen. 
the one thing that I know is that I don't even know what to say. Like, there is favor, you know? Okay. We are so favored. You have the grace of favor. Amen. Because, Amen. Because uh, sometimes I see it like yesterday was Mother's Day. Um, I didn't want to talk about this, but let me talk about it. I'm expecting a, a, a baby of my husband, and I'm hey! a mother of a son, of course. Wow. I was surprised when they when when Katiti called me she does flowers for you guys who don't know mm. and i received a flower with a very beautiful note mm -hmm. of being a mother wow so i want to really really thank god for that favor because it's not easy to get a man who would even think about that anyway i know uh, it's not neighbor. even here and the flowers are delivered Kati, katiti thank you for delivering my flower i don't a, know how we got to know katiti a man number. is in the uk is sending flowers yeah for you your husband is in Kamo, Chahia. <laughs> he didn't send flowers tell your neighbor tap tap for you your boyfriend is just here in Kawuku. valentine he went undercover how uh -uh. I think for the time we've met, I've gotten flowers on those beautiful days. Wow. Yeah. And uh, love. Yeah. There is love. And it's, it's generally, generally, I can say. It is generally, generally. <laughs> is what you can say. It's generally a good thing to be under a spiritual parent mm. that you, you follow ardently, like she said. I wasn't physically all the time here. Until I came back this side of Kampala. But whenever I'm here, I try Your to attend. Ardent. Yeah. But I'm always online. If I fail to get online on time, I always make sure that I, I listen to the audio. Or go back to YouTube and look for the previous preaching or someone that happened. Hmm. So guys, take care. Okay, it's a bad language. But really, 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 if you're here and you're not following ardently, Oh, you're not getting there. There is something you're not doing right. Tell them. Just listen to the word. Listen to it's not just a word. Like I said, in the word, there is a breakthrough because mm. she has the grace of it. Mm. And then in the prophecies, she may not say, I'm going to prophesy on you. Sometimes she just says it from up there. Like mm. the one of Monday, honestly. Mm. There is good news. It's confirmed. Did you ever think that your salary would be doubled twice in, what, which date was that? Okay, in, in May? I didn't expect that. Because so it was exceedingly abundantly above? And that was my word. That wow. is what brought me out, actually. Ephesians 3.20. Wow. Um, the only thing that I got that I never testified about also is that in this um, ministry, upon you, Mami Sandra, like I said, there is favor. When I was brought back to Kampala, I was given, there were exceptions. You know, a letter you get and they say exceptionally. Mm. I first got that letter for a bonus, and then later I got the normal increment for everyone and mm. the inflationary rates. Mm. Then now I get this letter on Wednesday. Double salary. Double salary. Double. But now, you know what double salary means? Can we count for you this money? Double. Double wow. salary. That is the best thing that ever happened to me because I was struggling with something that we are praying about. Mm. My cell members know. We shall testify when we get through it. And this is Which going cell are you from so that we can share it up? Sassy. She's sassy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So when we get through, that will make me go through that. And it's one of the things I've been praying about. Glory and you always God. say it. It will come to pass. And I'm very sure before end of june it will be done amen yeah. wow so, i want to really really thank you you're welcome um, for us thanking you means kneeling allow me to also kneel down and it say well thank you <laughs> yeah thank you so much for the grace that you carry you're and welcome. thank you so much i've never met you physically i always wanted to meet you mention that to you have been in this ministry for how many years? It's f it's three years and, and eight months. And you've never met me physically. I've never met and you, you physically. And you carry such great testimonies. Yeah. Yet they're poor here. I want to see Pastor. I want to see. She's not seeing me. I wouldn't break through. See your life. 
focus on the move of the Holy Spirit and leave me alone. Mm. Honestly, I've never met you like I come and talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. I maybe meet you on once in a while. In your car when you're going, that one is, I can't count it as his I'm coming next Amen. Wednesday. Come, we need to catch up yeah. for coffee. Uh -uh. Yeah, we need to talk. Hey. I need to see you and greet you in a okay. special way. I can't wait. Yeah, so thank you so much for the grace that you carry. We keep praying for you. Kindly pray for my pastor, please. Whenever you pray, Have pray you for her. Some because of you, your prayers, you just say, I tap, I tap. You don't even yeah. pray for me. Your, your prayers keeps her going and then God uses her. That's true. If all of us can Glory pray, to God. yeah, if all of us can pray for her every day, imagine the kind of grace anointing and grace and she'll the, carry. And the anointing she'll come with for all of you. you so know. I want to thank, thank you. you. I want to thank really, you. really thank God for you thank and you. your family. Thank you. Whenever you came from, I think some of us, you, I you came from Jinja, who <laughs> crossed the bridge to Mbarara. Yeah. Yeah. We thank God that, that the, the God that brought you for us. For some of us who have been there in the dark and now we are here, the only thing we can say is that we are grateful. Amen. Thank you so, so much. You're welcome. If anyone has not come out, don't give up. There is still hope. Amen. Faith. Amen. I was at 30. I think I'm now almost at 100. Glory to God. Yeah. Can we give God a mighty hand clap? Because he's the one that does this. Can we give the Holy Spirit a mighty hand clap? Can we clap for the woman that raised me, my mother? Mommy, stand up, stand up. Can we clap for the woman that taught me Jesus? That taught me Jesus. That's the woman. Can we clap for the husband that supports me to stand here every day? That makes sure I'm not stressed. That loves me right. We need to pray for all those people. Thank you so much. Banai. 15 minutes to the end of the service. We are continuing part two of this sermon on Friday. We are in a praise break. Tell your neighbor, we are in a praise break. Praise God. Amen. I'm you called. speak softly and beautifully. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm called Pamela. Um, maybe I should use this. I'm a parent of Green Hill, Boate. I'm mentioning that because it relates to what I'm going to say. Okay. I always boast about her vlogs and all the things she does on YouTube. Mm. So yesterday I posted something about, what was it? Those compound shootings. No, it was in the bedroom. Oh, my yes, from my blog? Yes. Okay. It was from YouTube and you were dating your husband. I so was dating him? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell yes. Marriage, you have to so date. So I took screenshots and said, you guys, can you have such a beautiful home? Mm. And they're like, ah, you, you, you are so tired of your pastor things. I'm always talking about you, always. Bambi, thank you for so, loving me. <laughs> yes. Mm. So after their egos come down, you okay. know, Green Hill parents, they are those high corporates. Look, guess, guess. Yeah, a lot of it. So You're after here, coming down, they're like, but you guys, we have to work. We have to work hard. Can you imagine living this kind of life? Then they kept discussing. Imagine how, would it, how much would it cost to have a swimming pool? You see her children. They all kept sharing. So in my heart, I was like, so you actually sh follow her? Silently, but, yes. but in denial. Yes. <laughs> so because of your egos, you don't want to admit mm. how they started. Actually, they come down and they started getting real. Wow. When someone mentioned that we are copying your ambition, your ambitious character, mm. I remembered that. Amen. We are really inspired by your ambition. Thank and you. there's a lady who said, she's called Evelyn. She said she knows you in person. Mm. And she said, oh my God, Pam, thank you for sharing about Sandra. I know her in person and her ambition is up there. You can't wow. match her. I was wow. like, yeah, I'm glad to meet you here. So we talked and I realized people follow you silently, but because, uh, yes, because of pride, they will not they admit. Yes. So mm. people are learning so much from you. 
And Glory then, to God. Yeah. Him, we we talked at the praise spot there. <laughs> who? You with who? No, him, him. When he shared that we we are spiritually growing, mm. I remembered the, the verse, bo, bo, is he called Bovia? Bovia. It, that's, that verse came resounding in my mind. Mm. And I was like, what? How can he mention exactly what I had in my mind? Mm. In fact, I kept asking my neighbor, are you sure it's the verse he has read? Mm. I was like, oh my God, this is my verse and I'm going to pray through it. Amen. Thank you, Bovia. You inspire us. Can we clap for Bovia, yes. one of our big intercessors here. <laughs> he has a vibe. He can dance. Yes. He can intercede. He's all yes. things. Are you single, Bovia? His worship is so You're amazing. You're single? His? <sighs> oh, guys, yeah. he's single. His worshiping is so inspiring. Start praying for him to see you. To say I'm married, though. No, I'm no, no, I'm telling these singles. Eh, uh, yes. Mm. Uh, so, his, his worship is so inspiring. Glory I to God. I wanted to give you credit. Honor Bovia. back to you, Bovia. Yes. Can we clap for him? Yes. Give him his flowers. Mm. So, he inspired me through that verse, and I felt so blessed. Wow. Glory yeah. to God. Thank you. Glory to God. If you're not watching the blog, you're missing. The blog is on YouTube and TikTok. YouTube is Pastor Sandra Bayingana. TikTok is Sandra Bayingana. I think that's it. Okay. Another person. Guys, we have 10 minutes to end the service. I'll speak in five. Okay. Praise half, God. We're taking half the service. It's okay. Oh, in Amen. <laughs> Can we give more 20 minutes? Over someone says we should go. How many say we should go? How many say 20 minutes? Overnight. <laughs> okay. Praise God. Okay, we are giving it 20 minutes. Okay, amen. But let's give a few minutes to each one who is testifying so that we can, you know, have so many people okay. tell us. Praise God. Amen. Uh, my journey started during the, the lockdown when we we're doing the, the 80 days of redemption. Okay. I, I had a job before lockdown, then I had lost the job. Mm. So when we were fasting, when you were telling us to have a date with God and pray and run around the walls of Jericho, mm. I remember even I was seated on my bed when you were telling us that don't just attend service and, and then you'd be saying, oh, is the food ready? Oh, so I would <laughs> lock myself in the room and listen. Mm. So I was seated listening and I remember I felt like somebody touched me and telling me it is going to be well. Amen. So at my job, when I asked my boss whether I should come back, she gave me a condition. Okay. She told me if you're to come back, if you bring clients, we'll pay. If you don't bring clients, you just go home. The first month was April last year. No, last year or 20, 2022. Mm. Then I got clients and I even earned more than her. Wow. Wow. And I'd promised God I'd always pay my tithe. So I even paid tithe. I was excited. Mm. The next month I was earning more. I even started earning like five times the salary I was earning before COVID. Wow. Tell your neighbor quickening. Yes. Quickening and increase and favor. Amen. So I remember I gave a testimony here and told you I thanked God for COVID. Because if it wasn't COVID, yes, I did. I said this COVID period was to, to lift me up. Because Amen. God lifted me up through this church. I was broken. I had a back problem when we were at um, La Bonita. Mm. I couldn't even stand and worship. I was already mm. seated holding my back and God healed me. I testified about that. Amen. So now my salary, I, I'd say that I would maybe send you inbox because I was like, ha, maybe I'll just whisper it. What if, what if my boss is listening? I know. Because I remember even my supervisor went to our boss boss mm. to ask how come it's me and another gentleman and we're the ones that were always working hard mm. so they went and told him this people i think you put them back on salary they're earning more money but then Five the boss times. said you know what this is they work for it wow and i have seen god favor me i'm a single mom i've seen god when i since i came here i got a plot if i tell you wow. how much it was you can't even believe it Wow. I've even saved half the money I need to start building. Wow. Yes. A single mother. You who is like, I'm taking you to feed her. I'm 
God has your own blessing. Yes, and I learned from you when you said that leave them, stop begging. Mm -hmm. Stop telling them now I am now now maybe now we can't eat. I said no, let me just let God look after me. Mm. And God has taken care of me. Then the other day I even gave a testimony about my family. God has raised my brothers, given them jobs abroad. Wow. And it was like 20 years they were just there not working. Mm. Then even Friday I came, I came here with my sister. We're from an Anglican background. Mm. So she was always telling me, ah, you don't leave your church. So when I, I brought her on Friday, mm. and she said, oh my God, Christine, your pastor is anointed. Wow. So she, she got healing. Actually, she was also like having issues. Then you were telling teaching about forgiveness. Mm, mm. You're telling them that you do, don't worry even if you don't, you don't feel like it, just forgive. Mm. And she told me she did and she felt so free. Glory so to God. There's a lot really God has really done in my family. It's God has given me peace. I've sent you actually a WhatsApp telling you how you changed my life. I found you in the saloon and I just smiled at you. I'm oh, you're you. the lady I met in the saloon. Yes. I and remember. <laughs> <laughs> We are having our conversations. I remember you. <laughs> yes, Don't I, tell them our saloon is our oh, saloon. Oh, I won't say that. Mm. But I told you, I said, you know what? Through COVID, you changed my life. I'm humbled. I was broken. I was like angry with life. I, get, I got up again, got born wow. again, gave wow. my life back to Jesus, and he has blessed me, blessed me, and blessed me. Amen. So, Glory back to yes. Jesus. Wow. And I also learned the word from you and praying. I even, I even don't, maybe I'll just come see you just for, for us to have a chat we and need talk about to. our story. We need but to. I just feel like. I no longer see you in the saloon. Do you still come? I even told you I would want to give you a tight hug because I come, feel like... Come, 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 come. <laughs> I will come while I'm talking because you gave me a few minutes. Okay, okay. I feel Clap like... for her as she comes. I feel like you have mended me. You know when you're broken and then someone speaks words and the words mend you and up? They mend you, yeah. Yeah, so I... I am so mended. And she's so I beautiful. Love you. 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 You see, I am so blessed. Amen. <laughs> so I have, I have also changed my family. Wow. My, my three brothers got born again. One was even a drug addict. And he changed? He changed. Guys, can we give God a mighty hand clap? So wow. He, he's, uh, okay, he's in Dubai now, but I keep sending him the links and everything for him to, to, to listen. Mm. I have been blessed. Glory to God. Yeah. I'm so happy. Yeah. It lights my heart to see people really coming out of those spaces and being great. Mm. And this is just the beginning. And More is yet to come. Yes, and we are watching your God. life. It's going to amen. be greater than what we see today. Amen, amen. 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 And I love you, mommy. I love you too. And today, today I confirmed a million percent that you're my spiritual mother. I was like, should I come and tell you that you are? Then you confirm it. But when you were talking to us, then I learned that, you know, I don't have to ask you. I just know it in my heart Amen. that you are. Amen. And I bless the Lord. And Mwah. I, I bless the Lord too. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Guys, I'm waiting for you on Wednesday. I need to hear those amazing stories. Who else has a testimony? We have 23 minutes. Praise God. Amen. That's my other daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, mommy, the grace upon your life. First of all, quickening. Mm. Me, when we joined the ministry, when we came out of lockdown, mm. I think the first services at the first services at um, La Bonita. No, no, no. Imperial. Fido Dido. Oh, Fido Dido, yeah. Mommy, when uh, that first lockdown ended, I think it was. I, I'm not sure if that was the first or that, but a lockdown when we started becoming physical. Mm, first lockdown. Yes. Um, so people were coming out of COVID. There was no money. 
people were broke. But around that time when we started attending church, we were physical. And my boss increased my salary wow. after COVID. And then I got a car. After when people didn't have people seemed they didn't have money. Wow. Me you, how was, how long had you been in the ministry? Mommy, we had just said becoming physical at Fido Dido when you were just starting those wow. prayers. So immediately you got a salary increment and you got a car. Yes. But now you ingalo. Wow. And then the other the other grace my upon your life is that boldness. You're told us when you meet a man, don't just be saying, don't just allow doing I like love this. You, I, I love you. Why looking what? down? I am a shy. I'm shy. So me, I always <laughs> <laughs> so I always I always thought, is it possible? Mm. Until it happened. When mm. someone came, I, my first question was, Are you born again? Mm. Do you know God? What do you want? Mm. And in that's my, my head, daughter. <laughs> tell you about that's my daughter. But some of you, you say, we shall go with wherever you, whoever you are. No, my daughters know how best. So, Even my sons. Mm. So, mommy, uh, most people be fearing that if you ask those questions, maybe the man will go. That's low self-esteem. Yes. So, mm. I asked, I said, what do you want? And in my head, if he said boyfriend, girlfriend, disqualified. You don't have time. Yes. Mm. So, he was, he was a lucky man. He said, I want you to be my wife. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. How long? Mm -hmm. Now, at that point, I got the ball and I said, how long? He gave me a time period. I said, no, that one is too long. Mm. Let us... Are you hearing the girl? She knows what she wants. She knows the anointing under which she submitted. That is too long. Uh -huh. So he said, we, we, we came to a compromise. I said, because of ABCD, we shall do a shorter time and this is... Do we start? So I think I came and met you when I was wondering. I'm like, is it early? Is it... And mm. then you said, no, give him an opportunity mm. and let him walk the talk. Mm. Mommy, when I went, I said, yeah, your time has been cut short because my spiritual mother said I, I can, I allow you to walk the talk. Mm. So like a month into, a month after that, mm. not a month, I was talking to my on the phone, I'm telling her, but mommy, you used my fuel. Then he said, no, get off the phone. Mm. Don't tell mommy about fuel. Mm. Check there in the compartment, there's a fuel card. <gasps> We have boyfriends who give fuel cards. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, those are the men we date. Then Not these ones. The motor keeps his second agamba. Only walk us through the canal. Tell Mazi to you way more. Then after a short period after, a short period after, he 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 told me, um, so you need to open an account for. For your, for, your, for your functions that you want. Because you girls want... Uh, to change 10 times. Want to change 10, want to change 10 times or what? I said, okay, maybe most people will say two, uh, uh, two signals. He's like, no, no, no. I trust you. Open it. When you open it, let me know. I put money. Mm. So I said, okay. I opened the account. I said, you, you got that? It's okay. Mm. I opened the account. But I mean, it's been... How many months? But this year, this month has, I say four months because this month is not yet mm. complete. I opened it and I told him in December mm. that I opened the account. Mm. Mommy has put money. Every month he puts money. No, every because I told him, I said, I hope you're going to be putting like maybe, me I was talking, I said at least one M every month. I said, he said, no, 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 those are small things. Hey. It's now. Art category, Kanga, it's because, it's because. <laughs> Yeah, but we are showing you the kind of grace we carry. Mama Tedas. Teweka anga. Gama muno teweka anga. So by, by last month, so we are in May. So it does one million? No. Hey. By, la by last month, the account now has 11 million. So four months. In four months, the account has 11 million. Someone with a calculator. 11 million, 11 million, four months. 2.5 every month. I preached about dating intentionally. And I told you what you ask is what you receive. God asked Abraham, look, as the farthest as your eyes can go, I will give you. But some of you fear to ask those things. And then you, you go substandard. What are you saying? A man, you're dating a man. 
and this man puts 2.5 million every month in preparation for the function. So you're dating while the functions are being saved for. And someone is waiting for a wedding meeting to stress us. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, rich men exist. And if you have a man struggling financially, I'm not saying now drop them like a hot potato. Those men, I decree, they are going to get rich in Jesus' name by virtue that you've walked into their lives. You're anointed. You are the stream. You are the source in the name of Jesus. So don't dump them. I've declared. Wamatid us. Also, the other thing is that most people, when people here talk about traditional men, mm. they think they are bad, but they want these ones uh, dot, dot com, com, six pack, 20 six pack. Mommy, me, my, the man I'm dating is a traditional man, but his traditional man he said he knows he has to provide, whether wow. I have money or, or not. not. Wow. When I, wow. When I say, when I say, when he, he doesn't say my hair is spoiled. Mogolenga <laughs> yimiride. Mogolenga shiagamba. Tukomao. Hmm. So, mommy, for me, it's, 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 it's that. Let me give you an example. Talk to them about the house. Ah, oh. uh ah. -uh. So, I'm connected with my daughters. I know very well and my sons. So, uh -huh. when, we, when, he, when I said, okay, my, my spiritual mom has told me to give you an opportunity. Mm. He took, actually, no, before even the opportunity, actually, before telling him yes, he took me to his site. And said, I'm his sorry. Site. His site. Where, where, his site yeah. where he's building. And he told me, I'm sorry I said this house before you came along. So now it's almost complete. But starting now, speak whatever you want. It to and it like. shall be it as shall. you say. To fulfill that which was written. Mm. Also, mommy, another thing I saw a quickening. When I came into his life, he had spent... He said it's about six, eight months over a land transaction that wasn't ending. Mm. He said, pray. I said, if it's meant to be, I came. Of course, I would put it before God. In a month, he finished that transaction. Wow. Because you carry the blessing. You are the blessing. Yes. So, when, of course, because, he, because he's, uh, he's where he works, it's a bit hard for him to come. Because uh, by this time now, they are leaving work. <laughs> Like now, let me, for example, yesterday when we came for service, um, we f when we finished service, I said, uh, I want to go, want to go and buy some things. Maybe some things that you'll need. So you also had a list. So when I entered the supermarket, I said, picking things, I picked things, I picked things, I picked things. Hmm? <laughs> so when we went to the counter, <laughs> to the counter, I was I was embarrassed when the woman kept the things kept the thing kept the price kept the the amount kept kept going up. Our workers are workers and no canula amass. Mommy, what I did what I did I let him drive the trolley to the counter. Then I said I've missed something. The web zap zem abege yo. And get it. So when I came, he was done putting the things on the counter. I said let me go to the other side and wait for you to be finished because I was seeing. Abagazi mo balava. Mobelebu ge abagazi ge zingo wana bo emisota. So the Bible says, mm. Mommy, this man bought for me, he bought things and he did not complain about the money I was spending. Wow. Because one day he said, I work that you may have, that you may wow. not. Love. A boyfriend, not a husband yet, but he's spending on you. Yes, Mommy. So for me, it's that intentionality. Tell them how you furnish your house. So, <laughs> so I found him in a process of shifting. And he said, I'm leaving that life behind me and I'm starting afresh. I said, okay, but that is your house. He said, yeah, but it's, it will be your house one day. I said, yeah, but also I'm not offering. Um, what do, mommy, we call it, we call it a, what we do. What, mommy, there's a someone you preach where you said, those things women do before the man you marry them. Going to wash clothes. Yeah, uh, those, thing, uh, those voluntary services. He said, No. I just want you to choose what you want because it will be your house soon. And this is everything. So I would say, uh, I saw the fridge in LG. He's like, how much? He gives yeah. you the money. You can buy You install so it. I said, chairs. One time I said, chairs, but I've seen blue. He said, whatever you choose. And I find it there. It will do. He buys it. She's furnishing her home to be 
as she's serving for her function. Tell your neighbor that is the grace. And ask your neighbor, whom are you dating? <laughs> you go on a date and the guy tells you, we've shared a bill of 50 50. Run for your life, oh. <laughs> You're not yet a help until you get married. Don't help. So, so I, I did that. Then, after I, I, I told him, you see, if you're going to run this house where I've bought things, we need to get someone who's going to clean and wash for you. I can come and inspect. Because you've been trained. It's not yet time for you to wash clothes. So that is what I, I, the lady comes, she cleans, she prepares things. Then may I come and inspect and I pay her on our money. Tell your neighbor, our money. Underline the word, our money. And tell your neighbor, planned girlfriend. Some of you are unplanned girlfriends. They tell you to, to endure. But I said, be patient with some men who don't have money. They will get rich. If you see vision in them, follow them. Mommy, also, You're headed I, I want to testify that he didn't start from the top. He's your typical, I worked hard and God blessed me through the ranks. Wow. So he's very humble. Wow. I think Agri has met him. He's, he's very. Sa he's very Agri, no tangamba. Mukowa mulaba. Agri. Wow. So, yes, so when you say that, that they sh Mr. Bengana should be put in a museum, when, when I see him, I see his humility. Wow. I know that there's another person with such You're receiving humility. from your spiritual parents. Yes. What are you saying? Glory to God. Can we give God a mighty hand clap? People are hiring spiritual parents. Hmm. I mean, that's the grace. The testimony is incomplete. There are many in the case. Okay, she has a fuel card. They are saving 2.5 for her for the functions every time she's furnishing her home to be as they finish it. People, you're joking. That's the God we serve. You people, me, I don't serve a substandard God. I know who I serve. I know who I preach to you. I speak when I am serious. So you should be serious. Okay. Another testimony or we close? Okay. Lastly, her. And then we are going to close. And this someone will have part two because I have a lot I haven't covered. We just went into a praise break. But now you move the chair. The has Praise Amen. Amen. Mommy, marriages and our graces. Me, the grace I see on you. No mm. G never watered. I mm. don't know what to call it. Uh, you have a grace to is it break bondages? Me mm. that is okay. What apart, you've apart seen. From, apart from the others, this yeah. is what I've seen. Mm. I came to, the, to this ministry. I, I am bound. Mm. I have things that chase me in the night. I have things that sit on me. Kumutwe. I was um, running mad. I'd started taking medication, by the way, guys. I'd been, to, I'd, I'd been taken to Mulago. <coughs> to, I've told you that as the uh, Customer number one, client number one that year. That, is, that was 2020. In Mulago? Yes. In, in the Mulago. mental institute? Yes. That side of where Tasso is, that's where I'd mm. gone. And these young people were, they were the ones checking me and I was down anyway. But what I'm, um, the grace on you is all that is gone. The first time I, 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 I was present in the road to redemption ministry, that was uh, Imperial Royal, I started getting slain. That first time I came, I, I was in the presence. I've walked the journey and now I'm free. I thank God she for... She is free, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very free. I thank God for the spiritual coverage. Me, when you talked about the spiritual co coverage today, it was confirmation. There's a time uh, I used to I used to have these dreams. 
Nga people are taking me. Nga, I'm, I'm so helpless. But through the word and through being ardent, now I, I, I can... Uh, uh, let me just give an example of one of the dreams. Huh. That I am rejected. I'm rejected. Yeah. They don't find me worthy. The kingdom of the devil mm. doesn't find me worthy. That time, I would be kind of a sacrifice. But now they even refuse me and say, uh, uh, oh, you're Things Glory like that. Glory to God. So thank Touch God. not the anointed ones yes, of God. That is what I wanted to say most. Wow. The spiritual coverage. Wow. Mommy, I sent you a message once. I was so thrilled when I, have, when I, ha I got that dream. Mm. That this prince was rejecting me. But before, I would see myself going back. I pray I come out of those places. I see myself on Buddha Buddha going back. So I am so grateful. Thank Tell you. Tell them about marriage uh, restoration uh, in, th in two <laughs> minutes. How the co wife left and you're the number one alone in the marriage now. Yes, mommy. Hago, <laughs> you're Haga left, guys. Haga came. Hmm? Ga, she's all over. Actually, mommy, my daughter is here. She knows about the things. She Just be about brief. It. Yes. But I was, um, my marriage had been taken. She, she took over my in-laws. My children, too. By the way, mommy, I thank you for the teens conference. Mm. I came to you. I came to you saying, Mami, you get a kunakubana banging, gabana bans, like they don't understand me, like they were going elsewhere. Eh? They, they had been taken over. But right now, Haga is gone. Haga wanted to take over my, my house. That didn't happen. God raised a standard. And now my husband is born again. Someone Viva. give God a mighty hand clap. Geneviva. Geneviva can testify. Hmm. My daughter is here. You want to say something? Mommy, can she say something? It's okay. Yes. Her husband, but, yes. who had gone with a hugger, came back after how many years? Mm, let me what? Over five, over four, over three, I don't and know. And now he gave his life to Jesus. He's yes. serving in church. What yes. are you saying? Mommy, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes. I'm so happy. Does I she have, have something peace. to say? Genevieve, you have something to say? She, <laughs> okay. Praise God, church. Amen. That's my granddaughter in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. Um, I'd like to testify about my dad. He, okay, me and my mom, we used to watch, we used to watch Pastor Sandra. Pastor Sandra. Okay, like, even Pastor TB Joshua, those people. And my dad used to say, what are you watching? Those things, those things don't work. Like, stop watching those stuff. What are you watching? I'm like, my mom told me, just, just keep in the lane. God is with you. Keep, keep praising God. Mm. And my dad wouldn't believe like he, I don't know what to say. Guy, we go to church, he's like, he would just go just for just just for people seeing just that you've showed yeah, up. Yeah, just to show up. But now, now uh -huh. he owns a missional community. Wow. Do you know what a missional community Tell is? Tell them. Every Wednesday mm. the community gathers mm. somewhere, maybe at our home. Mm. They preach. He preaches. The man now preaches. He preaches. But now you give God a mighty hand clap, you guys. Om yaliyawaba ngayagenda na komaona alokoka. You people, God, is, God must be praised. Amen. He now preaches to the community. He preaches. He there even is, mm. he even came here. He used to refuse to come here. Like he used to come. He picks us, he waits for us and outside, goes. and he goes. Mm. Then we used to tell him, just come, just come. He's like, ah. Oh. Mm. But now, he, he, he even talks about Pastor Sandra. Oh, what he did even, he say? What did he, he said, say? He told me mm -hmm. that, he told me that, he, I never knew that he used to go. He, he just started, okay, he just came once. Mm. And then he told me, by the way, where you were telling me to go, guess what? Mm. I went. 
mm. on that Valentine's thing mm. with who? With mm. your mom. Hey! <laughs> I even had to ask with who? With Bambi, your mom. You wanted to be sure. Yes. Mm. And he told me I met Pastor Sanj. Mm. I talked to Pastor Sanj. Uh -huh. I was like, hey, me, I talked to her before you. <laughs> hey. Wow. Amen. Can we give a God, God a mighty hand clap? A God, God. Amen. A God that restores. Like, really, this, this is amazing. Tell your neighbor, God is still in the business of miracles. Don't give up until the word comes to pass. Amen. Can we clap for everyone that has testified to encourage the others? You're the preachers of the day. And may God bless you. We celebrate your victories. We cover your victories in the blood of Jesus. It shall be from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Let's get on our feet. Our time is fast spent. And we thank the Lord for the amazing work he does in our lives. When I make declarations here, don't take them for granted. When I call upon a season, don't take it for. We come here serious and not joking. Okay? Okay, we are giving to the house of the Lord. Allow me pray for your offerings. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless every giving hand. Continue to bless them exceedingly, abundantly, above expectations. We've seen people with testimonies of double salaries, of salaries five times, of salaries every month increasing. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that the anointing of multiplication may befall their hands as they give tonight. In Jesus' name and every giver say... He has done. He has done great things. He has done great things. Again. But sing as if he has done great things. You're saying as if you're crying. He has done great things. He has done great things. Holy ne afana na yesu taliyo. Simula vanga, no nyeza sinamufuna, afana na, if you believe, declare, afana na yesu taliyo, afana na yesu simula vanga, turn around, no nyeza, no nyeza sinamufuna. Afana na, if you didn't turn around, you're not sure. Afana na yesu tariyo. Simula vanga. No nyeza. So you're all sure now, eh? Sinamufuna. Afana na yesu. Turn to your neighbor and say, Tariyo. Taliyo afanana afanana eza no nyeza sinamufuna afanana yesu taliyo can we give him a mighty hand clap he is amazing he is amazing he has done great things and he continues to do Amen. Okay, allow me to pray for you in just a few minutes. Just raise those hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your sons and daughters. We have heard of your wonderful works. We've heard of your amazing works. We've heard that you do exceedingly abundantly above expectations. I declare today in the name of Jesus that everybody by end of this year shall have a testimony that shakes the hearers in the name of Jesus. I have declared, 
and it shall be. In Jesus' name. And every recipient say. Amen. So turn to your neighbor and ask them, tell them who you are. Introduce yourself and ask them, are you born again? If they are not born again, preach the gospel to them. And tell them Jesus is calling you to the front. Anyone next to you who is not born again? Everyone is born again? What does that make you understand? You're not bringing people to church. Guys, if you have someone who is not born again, encourage them to come to church. Okay? Okay, if you're online and you've never given your life to Jesus and you'd love to, the Bible says you'll believe with your heart and... And do what? Confess with your lips. So just repeat after me and say, Dear God... In the name of Jesus, I repent of all my past sins. And I believe that I'm forgiven from today henceforth. And there's no more condemnation to me for the old is gone and the new has come in the name of Jesus. Today I stand to surrender my life to him that has put me at right standing with God through his blood. And that is Jesus. So I declare that Christ Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior from today on. And there will be no any other but him. And from today on, I am born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we clap for them? So if you're online, kindly let us know. We would love to add you to the beginner's class and walk a spiritual journey with you. Amen. Turn to your neighbor again and say the words of grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. We wish, we wish you a blessed week. We love you. And let's catch up on Friday. Amen.